Hello and welcome back to my channel, What If Deku Tuo. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off part 5 of our series, What If Everyone Gets Obsessed With Deku And Had Harim? If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Guy Number 23 from Fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. I'm calling this meeting to discuss something really serious. Everyone in her room looked at the brunette with serious eyes. Yuraraka had her hands on the small table with tea and cookies they had brought like a general ready to give out the strategies. It was kinda diluted, but they all could see her really serious aura. What is it, Yuraraka? Yayurazu was the first one to speak. Yuraraka took a deep breath, releasing it slowly before she spoke. Deku-kun, he's too hot. Ah, ah, come on, that's it, said some of the girls as they brought their hands to the face. Sure, no one was going to disagree with her, but calling an emergency meeting at two in the morning, knowing they had class, was clearly off the limits of acceptable. Even with the annoyed reactions, Yuraraka remained in her seriousness, which slowly made them all silence and focus on her again. Look, we all know that for a fact Yuraraka. I think I speak for everyone when I ask, why call us at this time just to say that? No Momo-chan, I really mean it. I have been thinking about it lately. Deku-kun had almost been exposed. I think that he's too hot for his own good. Girl, you are not making any sense. Sure, we almost messed up big time, but that aside I don't see any. Yawn problem with muscles being so damn sexy Ashido did her best to keep awake and pay the minimum of attention to her friend. Ribbit. I think I know what she's talking about. After what happened, a lot of people started to talk about him, Tsuyu said, her index finger poking the side of her mouth, her big round eyes half closed. Exactly. Good point, Su chan now imagine this. The cultural festival is getting near. We're going to be on stage in front of the entire school. With that much attention focused on us, don't you think there'll be a lot of people speaking of him again? A lot of girls, to be more precise? Aren't you exaggerating a bit? We love him, okay, but the other girls, and from the entire school, they don't even know him. Why would they suddenly get any interest? Gyro asked out. You underestimate his power. I really think that he could have any girl if he tried to. It's like a natural spell or something, and it's definitely not on his control. So we go through the cultural festival, everyone starts to notice Deku Kun more, some chatting here, some whispers there, then bam, a crowd of drooling hoes flooding the gym when he's going to work out. It's not like he would do anything on his own, but how can I say? Yuraraka, at first filled with energy, now seemed very uneasy about what she was going to say, scratching the back of her head. The others seemed to understand where she was getting to because their reactions were similar, and at the end Yayurazu was the one to finish that line of thought. Midoriya can be, he's very, easy to induce. Given their present situation with the Emerald Boy, there was no denying that some random girl could end having her ways with their precious boyfriend. Not that it was his fault, no sir. The world was to blame for having so many worthless women around. And, Yuraraka's words, not mine. So, Ochako-chan, what are we gonna do? Hagakure, sounding very concerned, asked the gravity girl. That's why I called you here. We can't lock him away, can we? A he he he. Her eyes darted right and left, and a nervous smile wavered on her lips as Yuraraka pushed the tips of her index fingers together. Upon hearing the suggestion, Yayorazu clenched her fists lightly on top of her knees, looking at the table with much interest. Ashido opened her mouth to say something, but she decided that it was better not, while Gyro just stared. Even though the usual unreadable expression, there was this tiny bit of doubt on Suyu's face, as if she was pondering the option. The shifting of floating clothes gave the same feeling. After a weird silent minute, Ashido broke it with a forced yet energetic response. All right, no way we see could do that. Now if we can't keep his away from danger, we should keep the danger away from him. I see. 
There'll be no problem if no one else gets to talk with him. Ribbit. I got it. We would act as a shield to protect his cuteness. Sounds like a plan to me. What do you think, yoraraka san Well, it seems a good answer. But we have to do it in a way that no one notices it, even Deku-kun. Don't worry, I've got this, Yayorazu assured her friends with a warm smile and determined onyx eyes. That was something she could do. And then, the weeks went on normally. Yayorazu's plan was basically fill every gap of Midoriya's time with their presence, that way they could keep him away from any dangers. Where is dangers, read girls. The key points were that they didn't need to be alone with him on the opposite, having more people around would eliminate any suspicions. If some random girl got near Midoriya, they would have to create a distraction, come up with some stuff to do, anything to drag him away from said girl, all this with the maximum of discretion. To the cultural festival, Class 1A would play some music with a band and dance, pretty much a show, so everyone could enjoy it and feel more relaxed. Everyone was beyond excited with it, and they were giving their best to make this a moment everyone would remember. Said efforts were doubled for our green lovers since they had to work on the preparations for the cultural festival and watch out for possible threats around precious Midoriya. As usual, Ashido went with Midoriya to the gym to work out, but instead of being around him all the time, she kept an eye on the girls from other classes and years that came here too. Since Midoriya always pushed himself a lot, of course he would draw some attention, something natural at this place. The way the pink-skinned girl found to work around this was to drag some of her stronger classmates with them. In no time Ashido talked Sato and Kaminari into going to the gym together with Midoriya and her. She just had to convince Sato that working out together was nice, and Kaminari instantly said yes when she mentioned some girls were assiduous attendants. Turns out bringing the blonde was the best thing she did. After just two sessions, enough to tense his muscles, Kaminari would walk around the gym with a towel on his shoulder, pretending to be tired and flirting with the girls around, without success of course. Lucky enough they would stop coming here at this time, thought Ashido doubted it. Lunchtime thought was more complicated. Since they were in the same place with all the other classes, the girls had a lot more to cover. With the news of one a planning to make a show for the cultural festival, everyone got at least curious about it, and many of the other classes and years came around. Add the rumors that were running around about Midoriya and the girls, and you have a huge problem to deal with. As Hagakure noticed, given her natural stealth abilities, some girls still talked about how weird it looked that Midoriya had so many girls around him. Maybe he's one of those types of boys, you know, those who hits at everyone. Eh? But he seems so harmless. Thought she really disliked some random girls talking poorly of her sweet precious totally cute boy and wanted to give them a piece of her mind. What worried her more was the other comments she heard around. You know what they say, the quiet ones are the most dangerous. My, my, did you saw him at the gym once? I'd totally give a try on him. Yuraraka was right. On purpose or not, Midoriya got a lot of attention to himself, and they would have to counter this apparently magical aura of his. Yuraraka and Suyu always made sure to bring enough people with them, so the table they were sitting was completely full. The others managed to fill the tables around, so there was no way someone could sit near him. Something particularly problematic was Class 1B Monoma, to be more precise. Since it came to common knowledge about 1A's plan to the festival, the annoying blonde kept coming around to tease them, and with him came Kendo Itsuka, the big sis of 1B. Yayurazu knew her a bit from the time they spent together at their internship with Yuabami. She wasn't much of a big concern, being friendly towards everyone, but something about her taste in motorcycles told Yamomo that she could be as convincing as herself. Overall, the plan was working perfectly. Whenever a girl managed to pass by their primary defenses, one girl of the Midoriya Protection Squad would make something to drive away the attention from him. One time Ashido dragged away a girl, faking an overreact over the shiny and healthy-looking horns she had. Well, some of her interest was fake anyways. When a duo of girls, one with butterfly wings and other with bee-like features seemed to get within danger zone, 
Su Yu involuntarily shot out her tongue at them and got away with some apologies and some blaming on her frog quirk and instincts. When a senpai from the third year, an attractive one with diamond-looking skin, was spotted making her way to Midoriya, swaying her hips and all, Gyro took a drastic measure and exploded a potato via sound waves from her earphones. That potato belonged to none other than Bakugu, who was shouting something at Kirishima while the redhead laughed. Needless to say, Lord of Explodo kills, with a face full of mashed potato, wreaked havoc on the cafeteria, starting a huge food fight enhanced with quirks. Midnight had to step in and knock out everyone, and by the time the students woke up, Aizawa brought some of them to have a little talk with Principal Nedzu, namely Bakugu, Kirishima, Kaminari, Tetsutetsu, Manama, Honkuni, and, surprisingly, Tagata and Amajiki. Tagata got affected with so much energy and ended dragging Amajiki with him on the fight. More important, the shiny diamond-like senpai had been successfully blocked so Gyro and the rest of the squad mentally thanked for Bakugu, Kaminari and Kirishima's sacrifice. But, much to Yuroraka's displeasure, there was still one big problem she could not stand neither deal with properly. Well, actually two big problems. They could keep other girls away from Deku-kun, but not if he was actively going to see one. Technically. And this one had to be her. Oh, if only I could put my padded fingers around that neck. She thought as she looked at Hatsume Mei, from the support department, class 1H, thought Uraraka held a warm smile with closed eyes in one of her brightest expressions, on the inside she was burning like a Vulcan in eruption. She just could not stand the pink hat, talking so casually with her Deku-kun, being so close to him, touching him, breathing in the air he breathed out, and in front of her, above all things. The nerve she had, there were a lot of talented students on the support department, even a pro-hero power loader, but Deku-kun kept coming to her. Unfortunately, the brunette couldn't deny the superior skills Hatsum possessed when it came to her inventions. Well, it is debatable given how much failures ended blowing up on hers and others' faces, but she did made an awesome job, which made Yuraraka particularly nervous. Not only she seemed to be a prodigy on inventions, she had that huge pair of melons attached to her chest, and even though she constantly invaded his personal space, Deku-kun didn't seem to mind it at all, just having his usual reactions. And let's not forget the huge common ground between the two. Yuraraka wished she could borrow Bakugu's quirk just for some minutes whenever they started to talk about some pro hero and the support items Hesh used or could use, and it got even better. Lately Midoriya had been seeing her even more, going time and time again to the development studio. She couldn't afford to glue on him and go there every time, so Yuraraka always got on the edge of her nerves whenever he went there. Not only that, if she wasn't mistaken, she spotted some messages on his phone one or another time, and they had the name Hatsum as the sender. Since when they exchanged phone numbers, Calm down Ochako, you already had sec with him, why worry about silly contacts? Yes, that's right. Now put that phone back where it was. You're not supposed to break into his room and read his messages since he's out to see pink-haired busty by Hatsum-san. Yuraraka slowly put Midoriya's phone back at his bed, a wavering smile crossing her lips and her eyebrows twitching a bit as the thought that he was with Hatsum right now ran over and over on her mind. She, as calm as she could, walked out of the room and closed the door. Good thing she made a copy of his dorm key, or else she would need to lock pick it again. There had been some time since Class 1 started with their training for the cultural festival. Midoriya was particularly eager because Iri-chan, the girl he and Tagata senpai rescued from Chisaki Kai, the villain overhaul, together with many pro heroes, Yuraraka and Suyu, was coming to watch them. Even after the rescue and the caretaking, he and Tagata still felt she was entrapped by Chisaki's actions, as if he still held her in a way. So they were more than happy when they received an approval from Principal Nedzu and Midoriya felt especially glad that she said she wanted to see him dance. Forget this thing with being nervous in front of people or stage fright, for her he was going to make his best. 
which was the main reason why he was so shocked when Ishido came to him, clad into a, into a black suit, dark shades, and with a sad expression adorning her pink face, rested her hand on his left shoulder and said three words that made something shatter inside him. Midoriya, you are fired. He stood there for some seconds, mouth agape, and his pupils shrunk to the size of dots, before the pink-skinned girl beamed a much more warm and bright smile, opening her arms as she tranquilized the teen. By fired we mean a transference to the staging team, looks like they need a hand. Midoriya's voice trembled as he spoke, his shocked face never fading. Why me? I said to Eri-chan that I would dance with her. You are! I'm really sorry, Muscles. You don't know how much it pains me. Ashido internally cried, but outside she kept her bubbly nature. She explained that they needed help to get Aoyama on his position. I'll leave the stage as a dancer to be a disco globe. My new move naval buffet can be controlled at long range. It's the perfect job for me, Aoyama then struck a pose, pointing up his finger. We want you to leave at the same time with me to help us. In other words, fired means reducing my time on the stage. Kirishima clasped his hands together apologetically. Sorry, really sorry for making you practice for nothing. But can you do this for us? It's for a bigger cause. The green-haired boy scratched his head as he thought about it. Hmm, as long as I dance at least a bit, I wouldn't be lying to Iri-chan. If this is for a good cause, understood. Merci. Thanks, you're mainly as hell, bro. You have been going well with Aoyama lately, so everything's gonna be alright. Ashido beamed with her friends, thought inside she cheered for other reasons. Sure, someone had to help Aoyama, but the fact that Midoriya would have less time in Vision Field of many unknown girls played a big hole on her decision. Don't worry, Muscles, Mina is going to recompense you big time. Bonus chapter, Missing You, Needing You. Success. A complete and wonderful success, that's the way everyone described this year's cultural festival. The show of class won a surprised and amazed the entire school, shaking away some of the heavy atmosphere created by so many events and attacks you, a uh, had suffered recently. The other classes from all the years said in a way or another how they got filled with the energy of 1A and how they wanted to transmit that energy ahead. But for a certain green-haired teen, it was so much more than that. By the end of the festival, he was able to see Eri Chan show to the world a true and warm smile after all the pain and suffering she endured being held by Chisaki. She was finally free from her dark past, and Midoriya couldn't be more happy, both for her and with himself. Being the successor of the symbol of peace, he finally felt that he was filling the hole properly. More than fighting the villain gentle, he protected the hopes and dreams of his friends, and he was able to open a path to a brighter future to Eri Chan. That's right. Thought Midoriya knew of the still long way ahead, he couldn't feel any happier right now. And as Midoriya waved at Eri Chan, who was leaving escorted by Aizawa Sensei and Tagata, from afar a group of girls watched him, caught up in the sweet scene that had just happened. They snuck up on him while he looked up in the sky probably with something on his mind. Whatever line of thought it was, he lost it once they tackled him, hugging the life out of his body and tickling him on the ribs. WW what? G girls? Stop, it stop that, aha, ahahaha. But you are laughing. It can't be bad, Deku-kun. Aren't you the cutest guy in the world? I thought my heart would melt back there. Haga ha 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 what are ha ha you talking about? You and Eri Chan. We saw you with her just now, even giving her a candy apple, which she simply loved. That was really sweet, Ribbit. Yeah, my sugar level is over the charts from this sweetness, muscles. Gee, girls, ha 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 ha. Stop, I can't ha ha, I can't breathe. Midoriya just gave up. He felt he was going to die out of laughing, but they finally stopped, just staying on top of him. It was hard to breathe, even more considering the extra weight, so it took him some time to catch his breath, but the smile on his face never faded. Boy, how he loved to be loved by these girls, and of course, he also loved them all. It was as if they were trying to compensate all the time of his life he was practically alone.
showering him with their caring and affection non-stop. He didn't regret this not a single bit. But as soon as he was able to steady his breath, they all got up, bringing him up too. Midoriya found himself in the middle of them, as they formed a very closed circle around him. Each one found a space to lean against him, holding an arm on the neck, around the chest, abs and waist, anywhere that allowed close contact. Thought he couldn't see everyone, he could guess that they had the same look Uraraka had. That single-focused, hungry and lustful look. He knew pretty well what that meant. G-girls? Deku-kun, it's been some time. Since we started to practice for the festival, we barely had any time to spend together, right, Midoriya? Um, yeah, we've been pretty busy, yayorazu san Around here we're always rushing with something ribbit. So we should make the most of the opportunity, right, cutie? I, I guess so. You helped me a lot with the band, Deku. And you did your best at the dance team. I'm really sorry that you had to change your place a bit at the end. But, since you were so awesome, Ashido, currently hugging him from behind, trailed a hand from his abs to his private parts, eliciting a small squeal from the boy. They just loved when he did that. Gee girls, and not in here. A and I guess we s should wait a little bit l longer. People might s suspect if we... Ah, leave they say whatever they want. I don't care at all, they ku kun. We should be more careful about this. Yuraraka, being the one in front of him, got on the tips of her toes, getting her face really close to his. Her brown eyes half-closed, her rosy cheeks, her face slightly tinged with red and framed by her brown hair, it filled his vision field, and her lips brushed on his. I need you, Izuku. Midoriya felt warm, not only because of her closeness, but also from the body contact everyone put on him right now, and also because Ashido never removed her hand from his crotch. Hands, some more slender than others, ran across his body, featherly like in the touch. He felt jolts run over his body, and his heartbeat rate increased rapidly. For a split second, he thought about doing it right here and right now, but that was enough to get his head back on its place at least enough to not make such a mistake. H, how about, my room? There's no one on the dorms right now. His voice sounded deeper than usual, slightly husky, and alluring in a totally different level. None of the girls complained about it. He was still the same kind-hearted guy. But this side of him, only they got to see it, he only got like this with them. So, not wanting to waste any second, the greenette and his harem quickly made their way to one of dorms. As Midoriya said, none of their other classmates was there, so they had the whole place for themselves. They didn't even reach the floor where his room was, Ochako already pinned him on the wall, locking him into a passionate and hungry kiss. It was like he was the source of her life, and she was desperate to taste him. And she wasn't the only one. Every time the whole group got alone with Izuku, somehow they managed to make things in order, but right now none of the girls minded it at all. Mina, pushing Ochako slightly aside, wrapped her arms around his waist and started to kiss and suck at the base of his neck on the left side, while Gyro followed suit on the right. Izuku couldn't help but moan inside Ochako's mouth as she kept kissing him, pushing her body as close as she could to his. When she broke the kiss to breathe, Momo pulled him from the wall, dragging him by the hand while Tsuyu and Toru glued their already half-naked bodies on his back. It was difficult to walk properly like that, but they made it to his room, quickly locking the door and almost instantly falling on the bed. Clothes fell to the floor and on the bed at record time. Their heated bodies moved against each other as each girl tried to have some taste of him. They were already breathing heavily and surely soaking wet. Slender fingers and a long tongue wrapped around Izuku's hard member as Tsuyu and Momo lowered themselves to his lower regions, while Mina and Ochako took turns on kissing him, and Kayoka and Toru received some attention to their chests. It was a mix moans and low noises that everyone made, thirsty to have their precious Izuku. At some point Ochako claimed the main position, standing on top of Izuku and quickly lowering herself on his hard member. As he entered her, she immediately let out a loud moan, moving her hips in small quick motions once she reached the base of his member. 
Ochako started slowly and sped up pretty fast, earning some grunts from Izuku. While they f-upped each other, Momo took the opportunity to climb on the back of the brunette, using one hand to caress her bosoms while with the other she caressed her butt and thighs, making the gravity girl moan even more and shiver. Momo moved her hips back and forth, loving the sensation of her crotch rubbing on Ochako's back, while Izuku managed to reach her bosoms, squeezing them lightly and pinching her rosy buds. I Izuku, I missed you, so much, ah, yes, Izuku, I need you, ah, on so big harder have me harder, Izuku. She was already lost in pleasure as she felt his member part her inner regions, for her, it felt like ages since the last time she felt so good. She had to make this more frequently. Ochako, so tight, I'm going to. You two are very dirty. Did you know that Momo, still using Ochako as a saddle, said as she bit her lower lip, her long black hair falling free from her head and on her back. I don't want to ah, uh, hear that from Emimum someone riding me like a like a horse. Oh yes, yes, right there Izuku, more. Keep going. Feeling the surge of energy, Izuku held Ochako by the waist, increasing his speed and strength, hitting her sweet spots again and again. I am close to Kane, Ochako. Izuku, fuck me, fill me. Ah, ah, ah. She reached her climax, releasing a flood of hot juices in his member. Her walls tightened around him, so he didn't last any longer, releasing his hot seed inside her. Ochako shook from her orgasm and her breath was short, just like his, but he didn't even have time to rest as Momo rolled Ochako out of him and took her place, opening his arms wide with her hands on his wrists. Her eyes were full of lust, just like Ochako, and she had a seductive yet somewhat aggressive grin across her lips. Momo didn't waste time and shoved his member inside her private part. She made circles with her hips, then started to move them up and down at a fast pace, slamming their bodies together as she lowered herself each time. You like it? You do, right? No, you love it. Why, yeah, ha. I say it, ah, uh, you love me, right? Ah, uh, say it for me. Hmm. I shit, I love it, Momo. Ah, uh, what? What do you love? Izuku yawn. I love, ha, your, I love to have it. HNG. Her eyes, locked on his red face, sent the message that she was the one giving out the orders, but that stare was broken once Achako returned to the game getting on top of Izuku, facing Momo and with his head between her legs. Eat me out, Izuku. He didn't waste time on doing so, sticking his tongue inside her folds while he took care of her and Momo chests. Momo didn't like very much the intrusion, even less the smug grin on the brunette's lips. Very greedy, eh, aren't we? Ah. You won't tease me and ah, just get away. On. Both girls arched their backs as their orgasms washed through their bodies. In the end, they had to lean on each other for support themselves, panting and slightly dazed. Then someone took the chance and shoved them out of the bed, even though they tried to resist. You girls are being too greedy, Mina shouted as she knocked Momo and Ochako, still holding each other on the ground, but mere seconds before they met the carpet their hands reached up and grabbed the pink-skinned girl by her wrists, bringing her to the ground too. 
she landed between the two and immediately felt hands holding her in place. With a quick glance and a nod, Ochako and Momo teamed up, taking over their friend's body. Mina's eyes went wide when she noticed the situation she was, with Momo sucking at her bosoms while Ochako fingered her relentlessly, their hands running over her pink skin, their mouths planting kisses and sucking at her neck and collarbone. L let me go, I don't want to, ah make out W with you too, stop, don't stop ah. Her hands stopped fighting against her friends. While she caressed Momo's ample chest with one hand, her other hand found its way between Ochako's legs, making both the girls join Mina on a session of low moans. In no time they all tangled up, Mina kinda on top of the two, and they all sliding their fingers in and out of each other's folds, taking turns on kissing and sucking at the bosoms. Meanwhile, Izuku looked from his place. He sat up once the three of them fell from the bed, and now he couldn't look away from the scene. This is, they are so hot. Forget about them a little bit. Kayoka yanked him back, making him go on top this time. She put her arms around his neck and wrapped her legs around his waist, a grin crossing her lips and Onyx eyes burning with desire. You know how I like it. Sure, shall we do it, he asked playfully. Fuck me senseless. As she said that, a gasp escaped her throat as Izuku parted her lower lips, getting his full length in and then getting on rhythm. Feeling his huge member moving inside her, Kayoka started to moan loud and scream. It was just what she liked, being ucked hard by Izuku's huge member, feel him stretch her inner walls every time he went inside and hit her most sensitive spots. From all the things she liked most, ucking with Izuku was together with being a hero and playing music. She doubted she could leave without it after knowing how it felt. Ah, oh, yes, eh, fuck me. Oh, harder, Izuku, so big, your member, I need it, more, ah. Oh. You say, everything, ha, huh, that you think HNG, at those times, right, Kayoka? Why, you know me, I love to make noise, ah, yes, that's the spot, ah. Izuku held her waist closer to him, lifting her up, which allowed him to reach other places, and Kayoko was loving it. He was so sweet normally, but he also knew how to be harsh when it was necessary, and with her it was definitely necessary. Forget about all the noise she was making, she loved every single second of this, and this was her way of showing him that. Kayoka, I'm almost there. Me too, fill me in, Izuku. Ah! Kayoka? Izuku let out sparks and unloaded his seed inside Kayoka, who held tight on him, even clawing his backs a little. Her eyes rolled up a bit and her legs trembled as she orgasmed, panting heavily and with her mind fuzzy. Her triangular onyx eyes focused on the shiny green ones and she pulled herself closer to him, locking him into a kiss while she kept moving her hips. When she parted lips with him, she felt the stare of a pair of round eyes, telling her that she wasn't alone with him. So, with a sigh she let go of Izuku and rolled to the side on the bed, giving space to Tsuyu, who pulled the green-haired teen around, making him look at her naked form while she waited on all fours. Hurry up and take me. I'm as horny as the others, you know? Always straight to the point. Izuku took his position behind her and quickly got his member inside her making Tsuyu gasp. It's so big, I really missed it. R really? That much? I missed it. A lot, Ribbit. Izuku started to thrust into her, holding on her hips and bringing her to him as he moved. He loved to grasp on her butt cheeks when they were like that. Her slick skin felt so soft on his hands, and he could hold her ass and move it in small circles, which only made her moan even more. Her cold skin was a huge contrast with her burning core. Rib it more, go deeper, Izuku ah. It feels so good inside you tsu. Izuku went faster. The further he went, more absorbed on it he became. It happened with all of them, as everything around him fell into silence and darkness. The only thing on his head, the only focus of his very being, was the girl in front of him. All his senses were directed at Tsuyu, the moans she let out that had a tiny croak hidden somewhere, her faint scent of coconut, probably from her shampoo, the warmth and the feeling of her inwards wrapping around his length. Damn, how he loved that. He loved her. He loved them all. 
and he was near his limit again. Thanks to his inherited quirk, he could go on with his girlfriends for a very long time, which he doubted quirkless Izuku would manage to do so. In fact, maybe he would never be somewhere near here if it wasn't for him being at you, uh, and meeting these wonderful girls. Going for a final push, Izuku leaned in, held Tsuyu on his arms and pulled her up with him, then one, two, three thrusts as he came inside her. Their juices mixed together in a hot mess while Tsuyu gasped for air. She didn't always scream loud like Kayoka, but her orgasms were just as intense. As Izuku felt her body go limp, he held her, leaning in a bit to plant tender kisses at the base of her neck. Tsuyu slowly opened her once shut tight eyes, looking back at her loving boyfriend. I can't get enough of you, Ribbit. Me neither. That's... Huff really, pant sweet. Gasp so, can I have my... turn now? Mina climbed on the bed, breathing heavily and with a deep purple on her face. She looked tired, to say the least. From behind the pink girl, Two hands made their way up to her shoulders, trying to bring her back to the ground while the figures of Ochako and Momo struggled to also climb on the bed. They seemed even more tired. Why such? Rush, Mina? Momo, also short of breath, held on the bed sheets. Don't you want to? Have fun with your friends? Ochako, with a reddened face, tried to hold herself on Mina. You too, let go. I just want some time with my man, damn it. Summoning a great strength, she jumped right on Izuku, who was watching the quite comic scene, if it wasn't for the fact that they were worn out by teasing and fingering each other. As Mina landed on her main objective, she let out a relieved sigh and hugged him, playfully acting as if Momo and Ochako were some kidnappers or something like that. Izuku, these mean girls are trying to take me from you, but you won't let them, right? Well, I... Oi, Mina, you can't just bust in while I'm with Izuku and expect me to do nothing. Ochako, you went with him twice in a row. That's not fair. Only because Momo was on top of my back and running her hands around Ochako directed a hand to Momo. Oh, and what about it? She looked back at the brunette. It's supposed to be one at a time, as far as I remember, she pouted. I didn't hear you complaining Momo had a smug smile on the corner of her mouth. All right, all right, you two crazy heads are totally ruining the mood. Actually, not. They all looked at Izuku. When you three were busy on the floor, how can I say, it was really hot to see. Really? Muscles, you are into those things? Well, I guess so. Until now, I never saw it, but... Pee -hee. So, seeing me, Ochako and Momo in action turned you on even more. Why, yes, you can say that. Izuku. Yes? I'm so horny right now. Even though you had a lot of, um, fun just a while ago. Oh, that? Yes, they are pretty good, but here's a tip. She leaned in to whisper on his ear, while looking at the duo on the edge of the bed with the corners of her eyes. I'll only come for you, my big, hot, sexy boy. Ochako and Momo were about to protest, but before they could, Izuku held Mina by her arms, lifting her and making her lean on the wall. He then turned to the two with a very misplaced smile. I like to be a fair person. If you all still want to go, I'm more than up to a second round. But you have to wait until everyone has a turn, okay? They just nodded, unsure about how to react to the kindness he showed when they were in the middle of a group sex. Most surprisingly thought was the shift on his expression once he turned back to Mina. The kindness was gone. It gave place to the eyes of a predator hunting its prey and, just what was up with his smile, they'd never seen him like this, so hungry looking. Ochako. Yes, Momo. I think we clicked something on Izuku's mind. Oh, you noticed too. Now you too. Just watch me and Mina. It'll be fun. Mina trembled with excitement. I don't know what switch we turned on, girls, but I'm already loving it ouch. Without previous warning, Izuku gave Mina a slap on her butt, leaving a stinging sensation and a very faint purple mark. Mina looked back at her boyfriend and found green eyes, eyelids half-closed, looking back at her, desiring her. She could not avert from this sight of him. That small smile on his lips, it seemed to conceal something 
something she would love to discover. Izuku, you are looking so hot right now. You too, Mina. That pink ass of yours, slap, I love to hit it. I ah, I love when you hit me too ah, yes. You want me to have you, Mina? Oh, how I want. His hand reached to her head and he lighty pulled her hair back, earning a squeal from her. I didn't hear it, you want my member inside you? Yes, yes, I want you to have me. I want your member inside me so bad. Is that so? Yes, a thousand yes, then I have to do it. Izuku adjusted himself and put the tip of his member on her entrance, making Mina wait for some painfully slow seconds before he shoved it inside her at once, making her whole body jerk forward a bit. She wanted to scream, but it didn't came out. All of a sudden, having his entire length inside her, it was a huge and very welcome surprise. In no time Izuku started to move, thrusting inside her, smashing their bodies together. Good thing he made her lean her hands on the wall, otherwise she would be pushed forward every time he went in. Ooh, my yi, guad Izuku, this is awesome. Ah, ah, yes, harder. Has was relentless. Again and again Izuku slapped Mina's ass and sometimes pulled her hair a bit and every time she let out a yelp overflowing with pleasure. It wasn't as if he didn't give his best with the others but liked it rough, she liked to feel his raw strength, so that was what he was doing. He even went that far to act so out of his normal self, or maybe it was a hidden side of him that never surfaced before, she thought to herself. Anyway, she was more than happy to find this new side of him. Mina didn't need to look to know her butt cheeks were bright purple as she could feel the stinging. She felt like her core was on fire and each thrust he did sent shivers across her body. She was so lost in her world of pleasure, she didn't notice that her tongue was sticking out a bit or that she was starting to drool or that her eyes were rolling up to the back of her head. Ah, yes, yes, eyes. Oh, ah, Izuku, keep going. Hit me more. Mina, Izuku. Both climaxed at the same time. Once again, he released an immense amount. Mina shook while she felt the hot fluid filling her. At some point her arms lost the strength and she slowly fell on the bed, letting the huge wave of her orgasm wash thought her body. As for Izuku, he wasn't exhausted it, but tired was a way to describe his state. When it came to Mina, she was pretty intense, to say the least. Izuku then felt a light poke on his shoulder, but when he looked around he saw nothing besides Tsuyu sitting and looking at him with what he thought was awe, then he felt a light peck on his lips. Guess who it is? Toru? Pin Pon, it's my turn, thought, I would like if he went easier with me. Don't worry Toru, this is a thing, between me and muscles. From the place she was, Mina slapped his ass, earning a small squeal from Izuku, something totally different from what happened minutes ago. I know you like it slow, don't worry. Leaning her back on the mattress, Izuku hovered above her, slowly inserting his member inside her. As always, he wondered what face she made while he parted her folds. There was something about it that enticed him and since she had a much slower pace, he could let his mind wander freely about those details. He wished he had a quirk that allowed him to see invisible things, just to look at the pretty and cute face he was certain she had. Then again, this mysterious vibe was part of her charm, at least for him. As he moved, Toru let out low moans and entwining her hands on his. She felt every inch of his member inside her, expanding her walls and reaching places what made her feel even hotter. Thought he couldn't see, her eyes, filled with lust, were focused on his green ones. He was so big, so strong, and yet he was just as kind and careful when he was with her, as if she was made of glass. Sure, she knew she could handle Izuku going more wild, but she just found it to be the best way for her. Toru could focus on his everything, his toned muscles slowly flexing, his shiny green eyes probably trying to imagine her in a visible form his freckles that swam at a sea of red, his green locks that she loved so much to ran her hands over. He was her special one, her precious boyfriend. Izuku spread her legs a bit, allowing him to reach inside her in a different angle, which earned more sounds from the invisible girl. Going slower didn't make this a single bit less pleasuring. 
on the other side at this pace, both of them kind of stood on the edge, waiting anxiously for the time where they would reach their limit, and it only turned them on even more. Toru and Izuku moved together, matching the time so their bodies connected in a steady rhythm. Their breathing gradually became labored as Izuku kept thrusting inside her. From the shifting of the bedsheets and the slightly louder noises she was making, he knew she was near her limit, and so was he, so he picked up his pace a bit. Toru wrapped her arms around his neck, pulling herself closer to him and locking his lips on a kiss. Her moans echoed on his mouth with each thrust until she had to breathe again. Izuku ah, you feel so good inside me, ya, yeah, yes keep going, just like that, ah, I'm so big, so deep Izuku. She clinged on him, digging her nails on his back. Toru, I'm close to ha, me too, ah, Izuku, Izuku, Izuku. Toru. As they shouted for each other, they reached their climax. Izuku felt her slender arms wrapping around his torso, holding him tight and pressing her bosom against his chest. Once again he came, and again it felt awesome, feeling her walls clamp his hard member as Toru released hot juices to mix with his cane. Toru relished her intense orgasm as it coursed her body, making her mind travel to somewhere far for some seconds before she came back to earth. Between pants, she pulled him into another kiss before she let him go. You are the best, cutie. Ha, you are awesome, Toru. Izuku let his body fall to her side on his bed. You all are amazing, he said as his eyes slowly lost focus, getting a blurry sight of the giant poster from All Might on the ceiling he got recently. What would his mentor think if he knew he had so many ladies at his side like that? The words from the teacher replayed on his mind. As long as he kept his main goal in mind, it was okay, right? That's bad. I can't keep awake. What if? They want another round. I have to keep awake. Izuku tried to summon all his strength to get up, but he just felt drained. Guess he still had to work on his stamina with this too. He was sure they were more than up to more, but he couldn't keep awake. His eyelids felt heavy and the rush from his blood subdued. He didn't even manage to summon one for all, thought he pondered later that using his quirk solely for this purpose was way out of question. During his struggle to remain conscious, he felt his body getting warm. It didn't came from the inside, it was an external source. Looking down, he found his harem, all gathered on top of him and cuddling on his chest. Girls, just give me a minute, I can still. SHHH, relax baby, you did an awesome job today, Mina put her index finger on his lips. You can rest now, Deku-kun, we are aware that we push you to your limit. But, Ochako, didn't you want another go? I can wait a little bit, we all can, Momo said. Plus, if we really need some, help, we can ask each other, right girls, Kayoka said, implying that they didn't have to rely on Izuku every time they felt there. Urges. Ribbit, I don't see why not. Me neither. Now have good dreams, cutie Toru ran her hand across his green hair, giving the final blow to knock him out into dreamland. They kept there, watching his sleeping form for a while before they realized. Girls, we have to clean up. The rest of the class must be getting back, Ochako said as she got up, followed by the others. Like last time, as Izuku rested they cleaned up the room, changing bed sheets, picking up pieces of clothing and finally, putting the knocked out boy under a shower. This time, Mina and Kayoka were up to the task. As soon as they cleaned everything up, the rest of the class arrived at the dorms. That was really a close one. If they planned to keep on this, they would need a better place to get intimate. Since the first time they met back at the sports festival, she instantly got a liking to him. He drew a lot of attention so he was perfect to show off her babies plus, he had much interest in discussing about pro heroes, so she quickly found on Midoriya a partner to share her thoughts about their support items and the ideas and projects she was working on. Yep, Hatsume may definitely liked being around him. And as the time passed and they spent more time together, she discovered that he was really fun to tease. She was aware, at least to some extent, that she could be very impulsive, normally invading others' personal space, but Midoriya always took the cherry of the cake. 
now that she thought about it, when he came to the development studio for the first time, they met via test blow-up, one of the many unstable stages across her projects. She landed on top of him and didn't remember his name at the time, but she surely knew him. That panicked expression was unique and impossible to forget. She laughed internally whenever the image came around her mind. To think he got shocked at such a level just because her chest was touching his. Not only that, when she took some insight on his physical conditions, he shook on his place while she squeezed his muscles. By now, making Midoriya jump around and squeal was part of the her daily routines. She particularly liked to squeeze her hands on his sides when she was pretending to take measures. He still didn't get why she more than occasionally touched and measured his muscles, and his face while he was holding still like a statue was priceless. Approaching him from behind and talk really close to his ears was one of the most effective ways to activate jumpy mode. But her best shot was that time when she landed on top of him by accident, blaming a bolt on the floor. She made sure that his body had as much contact with hers as the position they were allowed, and after seven seconds getting more and more red, his brain apparently froze. He seems on the edge all the time, hee <laughs> hee. Right now Hatsum was working on a support item for him. By now she accepted that whenever she worked on something related to him, her mind would wander to those more trivial things. That must be because they were friends. Friends, huh? Yes, friends indeed. Not that she didn't like or get well with her classmates at 1H, but the thing between her and Midoriya was different. In no time she found absolutely endearing and impressive when he started to mumble at inhuman speeds, something she believed only she did until then. Such was their liking for heroes that at some point they developed some sort of mind link that allowed them to understand each other when both entered on rambling mode. Also, the guy was a genius, not like her, but a genius nonetheless. His skills in analyzing other heroes' quirks and the situations surrounding him, with the level of detail and precision he had, was something she described as a rare talent. But Hatsum knew for a fact that it was the fruit of years of studies and research. He shared with her many of the annotations he had been recording so neatly on the notebooks he had. One could work wonders with that incredible amount of high-quality information. She found out later that this was his main activity during his childhood. She could totally relate. When she was a kid, Hatsum already had an inclination to build things, rather breaking them and putting them back together. When the other kids on the kindergarten wanted to watch their TV shows, the small pink-haired girl wanted to crack the TV open and see how a box could show so many different images and make sounds. On primary school, girls and boys ran around the playgrounds and parks while she spent her afternoons at the junkyard, trying to bring an old lawnmower motor back to life. It was at that time that she realized that taking showers consumed a lot of precious time, much to her father's dismay. But that aside, her parents always supported her dreams and objectives. She remembered clearly of her twelfth birthday party, when their parents gave her a toolkit she was saving money to buy. She would take forever to buy it on her own, given the low quality of her lemonade. She put the blame on the lemons since her experimental mixes couldn't be bad. And with that, she only improved her skills, taking on challenges bigger and bigger. She was absolutely passionate for the heroes that used lots of complex, cool-looking gear, and she decided what would be her future. A famous no, the most famous and great inventor of support items. She would be known worldwide and every single hero would use her equipments. This way, she would be helping to save the world, right? That burning passion she also found on Midoriya, looking at his eyes whenever he talked about his goal to turn into a hero. She admired and respected it. Loved even. Why not? What was wrong with loving such a wonderful trait of someone? For Hatsum, if someone on class wanna could turn into a hero, and she meant a famous one, that one was Midoriya. She would bet all her money on him without thinking twice. And she wanted to be part of this. Just imagine, breaking news, the hero Deku rises to the top ten. On interview he states, I could not make it without the help of Hatsum Mei's support items. Kaya, I can already see the magazine's covers. Great inventor Hatsum Mei releases her own line of equipments. The biggest company of support items, 
The Secret to Success, an interview with Hatsum May. Hatsum laughed as she entertained her mind with her goals, goals not just dreams, but jokes apart, she really wanted to make part of his success as a hero. She wanted to see him win, go there and become the cool hero he wanted so much to be. She never voiced it to Midoriya, but she always worried about his physical conditions. During the sports festival, after she lost on purpose to Ida, she watched in awe and then in horror as she saw his fight with Todoroki. Hatsum admired his persistence and his will to go so far because his opponent was holding back, but seeing him harm himself so much caused a pain on her chest. Many pro heroes ended in irreversible states due to fights and accidents, and she couldn't help but think that it could be avoided if they had the proper equipment at the time, which was why she secretly wanted so much to help the green-haired teen that she didn't remember the name at the time. It only got worse with the time as Class 1 I kept being attacked, and every time Midoriya had to be involved. It was like he was a problem magnet, a very strong one. So she was more than willing to develop equipments for him when he came asking for upgrades on his hero suit. First, the iron soles and reinforced arms, and now the special gloves to help his middle-ranged attacks. What had he called the move? Doesn't matter anyway. She was surprised when he appeared after the cultural festival with the gloves all dirty and worn out. Apparently she underestimated the power he held on his fingers. Oh well, back to the sketchboard then. She said as she got up from her working bench. She managed to get the gloves back at functional shape, so now Hatsum would work on redesigning it to sustain more damage and, if she was inspired enough, increase its power. As she walked around the studio, looking around for some ideas, Power Loader, the responsible teacher, from his place called her. Normally he would lecture her about the trail of mess she always left behind or scold her for yet another dangerous experiment with her babies, but this time it was different. She looked different lately. Oi Hatsum, working on the gloves for the kid from one eye again. She didn't bother to look at him as she searched on one of her piles of working-in-progress babies. Oh, Power Loader Sensei. Yeah, he took it for a test run, and it returned with some scratches. Nothing serious, but I want to make them more resistant anyway. Do we still have some of that light alloy compound? You'll have some if you find something to recycle in that pile of your, Sensei clearly sounded annoyed. She constantly asked him material because of her poor organization habits. Anyway, what do you want it for? Well, that compound is very resistant and lightweight, so I can replace some parts of the gloves without putting much strain on his arm's muscles. That way I can also reinforce the joints and give the air blasts a boost, she said nonchalantly, as if anyone with some common sense could have thought of it. Hmm. What? Bad idea? Now, this is new. Not only I see you asking my opinion, but you seem extra careful with this project. Coming to think about it, it was the same when you designed those iron soles. Power Loader got up from his seat and calmly walked by Hatsum, a hand on his chin as he looked at her. She suddenly felt slightly nervous. Her teacher never talked like this with her. She was used to lectures and all, but this was way out of her standard of normal. What with it? I can have some help sometimes, right? Sure you can. In fact, it would spare us a lot of accidents and machines exploding. What I mean is that you usually don't do things this way, and as much as it gives me a headache, it's your own style of inventing things. So I ask myself, when did you change that, and why? He opened a metal locker, searched a bit inside it, and came back to Hatsum, handing her two plates of a metallic material. Here you go. Be sure to make a good use of this alloy. It weighs a lot on budget. Also, there are some heavy-duty metals around my working bench. Don't sleep on the studio again, you have your own room at the dorms, okay? Okay. The teacher left on his usual calm manner, and before he crossed the door, Hatsum called him. Sensei, why all this of a sudden? Hmm. Let's say, you are much more bearable when you are working on something for this Midoriya boy. Less things blowing up and tool tossing. I'd like to enjoy this peaceful state a little bit more. And with that he left, leaving behind a confused and wordless Hatsum, 
as hard as it is to believe. She kept staring at the doorway for a minute, processing what he said. Had she really changed that much? Sure, having Midoriya around gave her someone to talk about what she liked. Actually talk, not a one-sided rambling or a monologue. But she didn't think she changed her habits at all. To be honest, she felt much happier lately. Happy, huh? She walked back to her working bench and stared at the blueprints of the gloves she made. She stared at it, looked around, looked at the white lines on the blue sheet, found the ceiling interesting for a moment, looked at her table again. Hatsum brought her hands to her head, brushing her pink asymmetric locks while releasing a frustrated sigh. Why, well, I can't focus. Why did Power Loader had to say all that? I just want to help Midoriya. We are friends, after all. She leaned her elbow on the table and rested the chin on her hand. She didn't get it. What was so different with her that her teacher noticed, and how did she not? Her yellow eyes trailed to the windows outside the development studio. Power Loader let the door open, so the orange tones of the ending afternoon flowed to her second home, sometimes the first. Me, Tsum all right, oi, feeling sick, Hatsum san. What? Where? The fire extinguisher. She jolted up from her place, looking around frantically. Midoriya, also surprised with her reaction, tried to calm her down. Hatsum-san calmed down. We are not on the development studio. Heh, so where's the fire? Lucky enough, nothing's on fire right now. He sweat dropped as Midoriya understood she was used to have something on fire around her. He looked at her with a concerned face, which told her something was off for him. What's up Midoriya? There's… there's some food on my face? She pointed at herself with a silly smile, but somewhere inside her she was kinda worried. Hopefully it would not surface and be noticed by the green-haired teen. She didn't have such luck. He waved his head but remained with those concerned eyes directed at her. Her smile waved a bit to a nervous one. No, it's just that you spaced out back there like way out. Are you feeling sick? Am me sick? No, no, I think I got lost in thought, just that. Are you sure? You seem to be worried about something really important. No, not at all. I guess the low amount of sleep hours is affecting me, haha. <laughs> Hatsum-san, you should not skip your sleep hours. It's not healthy, Midoriya knew it for a fact, since All Might scheduled even his sleep hours during his training to inherit one for all. I can't help it, I have been pretty busy lately. She scratched the back of her head. While this was true, she didn't say was that the reason for it. Hatsum had been taking project after project in an attempt to keep her mind busy. Whenever she wasn't working on something her thoughts made its way back to what her teacher said the other day, and consequently, the greenette himself. She didn't even manage to work much further on her designs for the support gloves version 2 and it was slowly driving her crazy. It didn't help either that she became more aware of her surroundings lately. With less focus on her work, she started to notice things around her. Namely, she got to know about some rumors running on the vast gossiping net of the school. She never was into those things, but when she heard, or at least thought she heard the name Midoriya, she stopped a bit to try and hear more about it. In the end, her poor sense of personal space betrayed her as she practically poked her head on the small circle of girls chatting about who knows what. Excuse me, um, Hatsum-san, wasn't it? Do you need something? Oh, me? She realized her position right now. Uh-uh, no, not at all. It's just that I thought I heard a familiar name. Sorry to cut your chat like that. She waved her hands in front of her, much like Midoriya would do, and was about to leave when one of the girls called her back. Wait, Hatsum-san. You were at the sports festival finals, right? Oh, yeah. She looked back at the group, something was up. Then, the girl, who had a pale skin like snow, looked to the sides and signaled for her to come closer. Maybe you got to know that by from class 1A Midoriya. Midoriya? Sure, I... S-H-H-H, not so loud. Hatsum quirked an eyebrow at the girls as they looked around anxiously and pulled her closer. So you were near him, right? Near? We were in the same team on the chivalry battle, and he comes a lot to the development studio. So, what's he like? 
What's he like? I don't know, he's nice, I guess. Nice? Yeah. He's very kind and sometimes he worries too much about the others, even more than with him. I see. She didn't get it. Why did she got the feeling these girls were somehow disappointed with her answer? Did they expect something different? Well, um, you were talking about him, right? Does it have something to do with his last equipments? Because if so, then I... Huh? No, nothing silly like that, didn't you know? No, what? Hatsum held back the words that crossed her mind as the girl called her babies silly. Another look around and the snow-like girl spoke again, putting her hand next to her mouth. There's this story running around that this Midoriya guy is a real beast. A real beast? Yeah, I heard he's dating both the pink-skinned girl and the frog one, said another girl with curly black horns that resembled a sheep. The one with butterfly wings added up to the fire pit. Really? I heard that he doesn't date any of them, but he gets to make out with them whenever he wants. No shit. I mean it. Okay, stop. The small group looked at Hatsum. She had a quite annoyed look on her face. She definitely didn't like gossiping. Look, I'll jump the part where I say it isn't nice to talk behind the others. Midoriya, it's not that type of guy. He can barely walk around with me without stuttering or getting all flustered. There's no way he would do something like that. Plus, he cares for his friends, and no one from 1O would do something so low like that. If you say so, said Butterfly Girl. Aren't you saying that because you are one of his friends? Snow White crossed her arms with a doubtful eyebrow raised. Or could it be that you like him? Finished the horned girl. At the last sentence, Hatsum lost all her seriousness. L like him? Eh, sure, I like him, but only as a friend. In fact, I totally plan to use him as the promoter of my support items, you know? She lied. But about what, exactly? Mamechumum. Have it your way, then, Snow White said again as the group walked away. That simple supposition almost threw her over the edge. But there was no way she liked him in that way. Yeah, she just liked to tease him and talk with him about heroes and make support items for him. Wait, where did that last part came from? And about him going around with his girl classmates? Nonsense. Hatsune was almost sure Midoriya was incapable of handling social interaction with the opposite sex like a normal person. Still, she felt strange in a way. For a moment, she felt worried, even afraid. The seed of this idea had been planted on her mind, and she couldn't get it out. It kept hidden in a dark corner, poking her brain every time she thought she forgot about it, which was why she had been so lost in thought lately. Back to her and Midoriya, he was saying something about All Might having used some kind of support item, but she zoned out as soon as he started to speak. She thought he would be hurt by her involuntarily move, but he ended being worried about her. So, you were talking about All Might, right? She did her best to subdue her inner feelings and resume her talk with Midoriya. Maybe talking with him would help her clear her mind, and turns out it worked out. As the cinnamon roll of sunshine talked about his theories and researches about his idol, Hatsum felt more and more at ease. There was no way this bright child of sunlight would do something so dark like what these dumb girls were implying. Plus, what if she liked him? He was nice to hang around, and she knew he liked to be with her too. Forget about those complicated things involving relationships and dates, they were good friends, and that was enough for her. Hatsum leaned her elbow on the table they were and rested her chin on her hand. All the noise in the cafeteria subdued as she heard the voice of her green-haired friend, her friend. She even unconsciously started to pick some of his potato chips as she listened to him, her eyes focused on his figure and a warm smile crossing her lips. And unknown to her and Midoriya, from another table at the other side of the giant place, brown eyes burned with anger as a padded hand crushed the strawberry milk box she was holding. Lips curled up sucked the drink by the straw. The burning stare didn't pass unnoticed by the companions of the fuming brunette. All five of them, thought in a much lower and bland level, had the same feeling of possessive jealousness. From a nearby table, 
watching the group of girls glaring not only daggers but axes and swords too, Siro, Kaminari, Sato, Shoji, Aoyama, and Takoyami wondered who could be the poor souls that were the targets of those intense eyes. The dense aura emanating from that table made something clear to Takoyami and his sentient quirk, who also poked out to see it. Is this what I think it is? Yes, dark shadow, revelry in the dark. A new challenger arrives. Think, Izuku, where did you mess up? Midoriya replayed the past months since he started dating Yuraraka. Again he had the feeling he messed up somewhere. There had to be a reason, he thought as Hagakure dragged him around to the library, whining about some difficulties she was having with a particular subject. He let her lead the way, so Midoriya didn't have to worry about seeing where he was going while his mind raced. Such was his engrossment on his own thoughts, he even ignored the fact that she had her right arm wrapped tightly around his left one and the many students looking at them while they crossed the school hallways. This action. Those actions he noticed recently. They had to have a reason. For starters, Hagakure didn't go to the library. It was an unspoken fact that everyone agreed, even the invisible girl. Being always full of energy and having her bubbly nature, she just couldn't keep quiet for long periods, something strictly necessary in that type of ambient, hence the awkwardness of their actual situation. She had no problem studying with her friends, but going to the library told Midoriya that something was off, and he naturally started to think about what possible mistakes he could have done. Of course he was to blame, right? If so, he must have done something awful because it wasn't only her. In fact, his whole harem had been acting different, and if he could tell, they had been kind of on the edge. Second case, Tsuyu is being extremely clingy with him. Midoriya could count on his fingers the total of hours he had without her at least two meters away from him. She sat so close at his side during lunch that their shoulders brushed every time. Between classes she kept coming to his desk. At the dorms, no matter what he was doing or where he was, the frog girl was with him or near him. She also got a habit of hugging him a lot whenever they were out of sight. Third case, Yayarazu and her nearly control freak manners. Not that he didn't feel the caring and affection she had for him, but lately it had been too much, way too much caring and affection. She constantly texted him, saying lots of cute things, but also asking where he was, what he was doing, or when he planned to return. And let's not forget the regimen she put him into, and the odd need to praise him whenever he made something. Give her a green hair dye, and he would pretty much end with a younger version of his mother, which was unsettling to say the least. Fourth case, Ashido's social force field. While Tsuyu kept glued on him, Ashido made sure that Midoriya had little to no contact with others besides his harem. Her tactics were diverse. Surprise and convenient duties to fill places to see and things to do, not a single one he could remember of even thinking about. But here she was, always ready to take them out of the scene, usually to somewhere secluded. It only got worse when it came to other girls. One time he was mumbling something through the corridors and ended stumbling on Yanagi Riaiko from Class 1B. Some stuttering and frantic apologies came as usual, and she, in her always quiet behavior, was about to say something too, but Ashido sprang out of who knows where and pulled him away, eventually shouting something about wanting new clothes. Fifth case, extremely aware gyro. It took a single female crossing their path, and she instantly snapped her head around, glancing at said lady before shifting her gaze to Midoriya, inquiring him with a simple yet dangerous question. You looked at her, didn't you? Her tone was calm and collected, but the intensity of her onyx eyes assured him that he didn't want to give the wrong answer. And what's worse, once she asked it, he naturally looked at the way the random girl went by. It was like someone saying, don't touch the red button, then you feel that urge and curiosity to press it. And at that moment she went on showering him with questions, most of them in the lines of, was it her butt? Is it her waistline? Your eyes were on her thighs. Are you really that much into big boobs? And his favorite, did you try to imagine her naked? Even though he firmly denied each and every one of her questions, deep down Midoriya knew she was most likely taking the opposite for answers. And sixth case, probably the most weird and worrisome, Yuraraka's general absence. 
Since they met at the entrance exams they had been hanging out together and it only increased after they started dating. Now that he was the center of a harem, Yuraraka practically never left his side, spending time with him and his other friends, so it made him worry sick about her lack of presence. Not that she wasn't there with them, physically speaking, but her mind seemed to be somewhere else. And there was also a coldness in her eyes, in her overall features that lead Midoriya to wonder if something really serious had happened. And the top of the cake, she wasn't going to talk about it, apparently. When he asked if something was bothering her, she simply shook her head and beamed a smile, saying she was totally fine. He didn't buy it. It's okay, you just need to take some measures. Actual measures. Yeah, focus on the work. Hatsum said as she walked through the roads that lead to the dorms. She fiddled with the metric tape on her hands while she headed to a building that was not the one her class was in. She stopped for a moment in front of the building, somehow feeling intimidated by the big sign with one or written on it. Or was she worried about something else? Someone, maybe? Before she could take a step into the entrance, a voice loud and slightly aggressive called her from behind, making her jump a bit. Damn, she never was a person to be scared like that. She must be spending too much time with Midoriya. Oi, you there, shitty pink locks. Did you get lost on your way to your dorm? She turned around to find none other than Bakugu, using a black sleeveless shirt and light yellow shorts. Given the small towel hanging from his shoulder, he must have been training somewhere. He had an annoyed expression across his face, but at the same time she sensed some dangerous attention towards her, as if he was deciding whether he should or not blow her up here and now. From what Midoriya had said, the blonde had some issues to keep his anger in check, so Hatsum tried her best to sound as friendly as possible. Oh, oh no, not at all. What was the name again, Kaken? Huh? His face instantly changed to one of anger upon hearing the nickname. Only one person on earth called him that. I, I mean, Bakugusam, I was just hoping I could find someone here. You see, I have some projects and I have to take some measures, get some details, stuff like that. This seemed to put the explosive teen at a less aggressive state as his teeth stopped grinding and the tiny explosions on his left palm ceased. You are from the support department, right? Why, yeah. You must remember, I was at the last event of the sports festival and... I don't recall any dumb-looking girls with stupid cross sights for eyes. Get out of my way before I decide to put you in your damn place, Bakugu said as he walked by her, never looking at the pink hat. Hatsum spinned on her heels once the shivers on her body stopped. Ah, be Bakugu-san, have you seen? Do you know if Midoriya is there? He stopped on his tracks once he heard the name. He shot a glare at her from above his shoulder and lifted his right hand, already cracking with tiny blasts. His eyes, accompanied by a terrorizing grin, sent a killing intention, thought not directed exactly at her. Ha! Huh. What do you want with shitty Deku? M. My project is F for him. I wanted to discuss some things. His eyes narrowed and she could feel his intense gaze searching in her very soul for something that she didn't know. After some tense seconds, he resumed on his way to the dorms, but visibly more angered than before. It seems trash always stays with trash, he muttered that part, but she heard it. Listen up, I don't care about that useless Deku, neither where he is, don't waste my time with stupid shit. And with that he stomped into the building. Midoriya said that Bakugu had always been intense, but she clearly had doubts about the popularity rank he would get once he became a pro hero. That is, if he didn't get mistaken for a villain and locked into a max security prison. After that encounter, Hatsum wished she could find someone more cooperative or friendly within the Class 1A. As she stepped into the common room, she met with loud noises and much agitation way different from her dorms since her classmates were more on the quiet and secluded types. Plus, she was sure most of them avoided interaction with her at some level, no blame on them for this. As she looked around, someone apparently recognized not only her presence but her identity as well. Aren't you, Oi Ida, guess who's here paying a visit? Kirishima-kun, it's not advisable to shout like that, it can be inconvenient for the other you. 
Hatsum watched as the red guy laughed at the perplexed expression of the tall blue-haired guy once he spotted her, bringing his ironically loud lecturing to a halt. Um, um what was your name again? As Ida started another heated speech about good manner between students, her eyes scanned the rest of the common room, hoping to find a certain mess of green hair. Her attention, thought, was drawn to half-white, half-red hair and mismatched colored eyes. Todoroki just entered the scene with his neutral semblant as usual. Then he spotted Hatsum from the corners of his eyes and walked to his other friends. Maybe he recognized her from the sports festival. What is all this noise about? I can hear from my room. I'm really sorry for disturbing your activities, Todoroki-kun, Ida said making a robot-like bow. No, I wasn't doing anything at all. More important, it seems we have a guest, half hot half cold looked at the pinkette with a curious face. Kirishima then jumped from his seat and walked to Hatsum with a toothy and warm grin. Oh yeah, we never got to talk with each other, Kirishima Ijiro. You are that girl from class 1H, the support class, right? He came to her and offered a hand, which she accepted with some hesitation. What was it that meeting Midoriya's friends made her nervous? She spoke as her arm was shook with a little bit too enthusiasm. Yes, support department, Hatsum May. Amum, um, if it doesn't bother you, can you tell me where Midoriya is? I'd like to talk with him. She showed a bright smile, but it waved a bit when she noticed the decrease of the surrounding noises. All the students looked at her with many different expressions, which confused her. Since he was closer to her, Kirishima was the one to speak first, clearly uneasy and maybe having some other thing on his mind. Oh, Midoriya, yeah, he got some items from you already. Indeed. In fact, I came to talk about another item for him. Now most of the surprised faces turned into relieved ones. Was she missing something? It sure seemed she was because some of them still had this suspicious look directed at her, namely that Todoroki guy, Kirishima himself, the boy with the bird head and blonde guy with the headphones. Hatsum also saw a small dark aura coming from a corner. She found the purple-haired midget of 1A crouching on the floor and chewing on a purple ball. Was he supposed to do that since they came from his head and wait? Was he crying? Midoriya usually goes to the gym or the running track at this time of the day. You can look up in these places, but if you don't find him then, Todoroki spoke from his place with his calm voice. All the noise had subdued. He didn't finish his sentence because he, like everyone one, knew where he could be but didn't want to say that out loud as if the silence negated the fact. It was at this moment that Kaminari entered the awkward chat. Then he must be with one of the girls, Normally Gyro drags him to listen some of her old vinyl discs. I believe he either went to gym with Ashido san or to the library with Yamomo Shoji spoke from his place. But it's Thursday. He should be somewhere with Tsuyu by now. Siro pondered with a hand on his chin. Um, guys, am I missing something? She hoped she could get a simple answer. Revelry in the dark, it never came. Shoji came from his place and walked to Kirishima and Hatsum. Um, Hatsum-san, right? I think you shouldn't be so close to Midoriya, really. She looked at the tall teen with surprised and confused eyes. She was okay with the extra limbs, the way above average size of his body, and with a ninja mask. What didn't sit well was the implications of his statement. And why not? We already spend a lot of time together. That's kind of the deal. You should avoid that amount of contact with Midoriya. Trust me, it's for your own good. Wah, well, you guys aren't making any sense now. I just wanted to talk to him. Let's say there are some external forces and you will do well if you avoid them. Oi, Shoji, are you saying what I think you are saying? Kaminari leaned on the couch where he was sitting, removing his headphones to listen clearly. Shoji ran a hand through his white hair, looking down and in deep thinking. He then looked at his classmates. Yeah, pretty much. What do you mean, big boy? Um, Shoji-san. You may not have noted, and I don't want you to get paranoid, but right now you are kind of being targeted. Targeted? Ooh, so she was the one Kirishima said in realization. From the corner of the room, curses sounded, directed to the green-haired teen. How can you be so sure, Shoji-san? 
Todoroki asked. You know I have a very good hearing. They were whispering some things around and I accidentally heard some of it. Shoji didn't say anything before because he didn't want his friends to think he walked around peeping at their private businesses. In fact, whenever Shoji wanted to train his sensorial skills, he moved as far as he could from his classmates to respect their privacy. Also, from previous experiences, he knew very well the dangers of hearing too much. Don't worry, no one thinks you made this on purpose, Shoji-kun, Ida said, waving his arms around as usual. But for Hatsum it wasn't enough. She felt dragged into a huge internal joke or something, and she didn't even get to talk with Midoriya, her main objective. Too bad she already sank so much on the subject. Now she was curious. Wait, wait, let me get this straight. There's someone actually wanting me to get away from Midoriya. That's right, we had our suspicions, but it's pretty clear now, said the half and half teen. But why? Why would anyone want this? Takoyami lowered his head and closed his eyes as his arms kept crossed. Revelry in the dark. All right, that. Does it mean something, or? Look, you seem to be a nice person. Kirishima cut her out, putting a hand on her shoulder. A heavy hand on her shoulder. Because of that, we are warning you. It's kinda hard to explain why, but just give some space to him, okay? It's for the best. He had his other hand on his neck and looked away as he finished his sentence. Hatsum looked at the floor. She let everything sink in for a minute, then her head shot up. She shook her head and gently removed his hand. I appreciate the consideration, but there's no way I'm going to stop hanging out with Midoriya just because someone doesn't want me near him. Her voice showed clearly she intended to do as she was saying. I'm not saying to completely ignore him, just to get a little. And there's more. Who is this person to tell who he can hang around with or not? Midoriya is a nice guy, and I lo I like to be around him. Sure, we all do, but you need to understand that oh shit. No, you all and whoever this person is have to understand that I'm going to be with Midoriya as much as I want. You know why? because he also likes to be around me, so deal with it. Hatsune didn't notice until she was finished and short breathed that her tone and voice were pretty altered. She started to say things, and they kept coming before she could properly reflect about them. Damn, she almost let the L word slip, and the best part was that she didn't know why she got so frustrated. Frustrated. That's how she felt. For not being able to see Midoriya, for knowing that someone wanted to separate them, for hearing that Bakugu guy talking poorly of him, for knowing that all around the school a bunch of dumb girls were spreading rumors and gossips about him. She felt frustrated about all that and other things that didn't matter right now. But the harm had been done and now she had to make up for it, so she quickly waved away all that frustrations and made her best to apologize with Class 1A. S is sorry for that, I just said what came into my head, I should not say something like this in that way, even if I really mean it, um. She searched for their reactions, but they all were frozen in place. Todoroki, barely changing his expression at all, nodded to her that they were all good, which she took as her cue to leave. As she thanked for their time and help with a quick bow, she turned around and left the dorms, deciding to cool her head before looking for Midoriya again and on her way through the half-open doors she passed by some of the girls from 1A. She saw the girl with earphones on the ears, the one with a huge ponytail, the girl with the round face and frog girl too. She just looked ahead as she walked away, but she could feel some gazes at her back. The frozen faces of the guys back there weren't because of what Hatsum said, were they? She thought not. With eyes like that, revelry in the dark sounds like euphemism. As the pinkette walked away the group of girls followed her with their eyes, unconsciously focusing on the small sway of her hips. Yuriraka slowly raised two hands balled up into fists and took a step forward, instantly being held back by Yayurazu. Release me, Yamomo. Yuriraka, I know how you're feeling, but you can't just go after her like that. I just want to talk with her, repeatedly, with my hands. Easy there, Ochako-chan. We all feel the same way, but we can't act like that. At least legally, Ribbit. 
Oh, Tsu Chan, I swear, if I see her any closer to him, I'm gonna go there and beat her, uh. Now, let's not get too heated up. The boys are near Gyro shut Uraraka's mouth before she finished her threat. The boys inside were already staring at them. It took another whole minute to put Uraraka into a more controlled state, then they entered the dorms, ignoring the uneasy and partially scared looks they were receiving from their classmates. Hey, if Tsuyu is here, where's Midoriya? Kaminari raised the question, breaking the awkward silence. While they wondered, Todoroki walked to Shoji, who was just expecting the questions to shower over him. Shoji-san, what exactly did you hear from them? Well, something about protecting Midoriya, and lots of bad language directed at most of the girls from UA. They seem very possessive, to be honest. They should not offend our schoolmates, even if they didn't hear it. Oi, Ida, this is almost a life or death matter. Ida was about to go up there and lecture them about language and respect, but Siro was quick to stop him. Meanwhile, Kirishima talked with his friends near him. Man, whatever it is, Midoriya really did a number here. To think he ended in that place. I would not be so surprised. Really? I mean, he's a nice guy, but I would never imagine he could pull off something like this Tadaroki. Midoriya seems to possess a hidden power that allows him to charm people around him. Be it good or bad, he's always drawing attention. Take me for an example. So, you telling me you feel attracted to Midoriya? You not? No, um, um the way you put it. Man, you sounded really gay, Kaminari joined the group, poking Todoroki on his shoulder. Half and half just looked at the blonde with his unamused eyes, as if what he said didn't make sense at all. I don't see how appreciating the hard work and determination of a friend can be considered as gay. If nothing, the one to fill the role would be Kirishima, Todoroki said plainly, pointing to the redhead. Wait, what? Don't get me wrong, but you seem way too friendly towards Bakugu. Come on, guys, he's like a bro, no, he is my bro. All right, all right, enough of this talk. We are sounding like a bunch of girls talking about some smut novel Siro join the group. But just for curiosity's sake, who do you think Midoriya would hook up with? The guys stopped to think. All of the girls seemed to be head over heels for the green-haired teen, but he'd need to pick one, right? And, right? Todoroki had a hand on his chin as he pondered. Maybe Yayorazu. Yamomo? Are you sure? Kaminari said. Why not? She's pretty, intelligent, and polite. I don't see why not. Yeah, she's pretty hot. But that's the point. Too much sand for his little truck. He'd be better with Tsuyu. Thiro was the next to share his thoughts. Tsuyu, huh? Seems nice, but I think it would be more interesting if he hooked up with Ashido. Ashido? Man, I know her a bit. She's always hyped, Kirishima added. But doesn't the contrast add up to the pair? I think it would be fun seeing her dragging him around a shopping trip or something, he getting nervous and all. Ha, huh, sure thing, but by what I just saw, that Hatsune girl would be the perfect match, Kirishima lifted his fist in an assurance sign. Hmm, Hagakir could work just like Ashido, right? Siro spoke again. Maybe Gyro, since she has a personality similar to his in a way. Todoroki added. I was at that time that Ida came in, adjusting his glasses. I think you all are missing a crucial point. Since the beginning of the year, Midoriya and Yoraraka had been hanging around each other, and I can assure you that they are most likely to be together, his glasses flashed some light was he held a proud pose. Since he secretly supported the two of them, he just had to defend his cause. Surprisingly, Tokoyami also joined the group. Given the recent situation, I'd stick with Ida, but for a different reason, everyone looked at his, waiting for him to finish his train of thought. Yuraraka san I can sense a strong force emanating from her. A dark, powerful force that will certainly lead her to her goal. I don't know. Something in their talk seemed off, like they were being aggressive only against strangers, but not between themselves. Do you think they could work around this problem? Shoji added. By problem, you mean who's gonna get with him in the end, right? Tadaroki cleared up. Yes. So, what do you think? They all thought about it again, trying to create a mental image or something. 
At first it seemed impossible, but given the recent events, as I said before, since we are talking about Midoriya, there's a chance it could change the course of this situation, Todoroki concluded. In other words, Shoji started and everyone finished along with Takoyami. Revelry in the dark. The boys dispersed, going back to whatever they were doing before. As Todoroki returned to his room, he spotted Bakugu leaning on a wall at the corner of the corridor and stopped by the blonde who had a plain expression. You had been listening, didn't you? So, what do you think about Midoriya? What I think? His plain face twisted into an angered one, grinding his teeth and almost putting his eyebrows together. Deku is Deku, so no matter what dumb bitch he stumbles on, he's still going to be the useless loser he always was. He's going to die alone and virgin, like the useless piece of shit he is, his voice was low. But something on his tone told Todoroki that Bakugu was telling this to himself, instead of just sharing his opinion. The explosive teen left the place he was, walking past Todoroki, bumping on purpose on his shoulder. He then shouted another thing to the half and half teen. And just for your information, you surely sounded gay back there, watch out or else round face is going to be after your sorry ass. You should also be careful. At this rate, there will be no girl left on earth to try and find something nice on your face. Todoroki had a tiny smug smile on his lips, and Bakugu would sense it from a mile away, hence why he stopped dead on his tracks, turning around with murderous eyes. Ha! Did you say some shit just now? I just said that, if you don't make something about that bad attitude of yours, no girl will want to hang around you. Listen here, if I wanted, I could get as many girls I wanted, got it. Sure, that's why you are alone here when Midoriya was a crowd after him without making much effort. The smile on Todoroki's lips was pretty visible now. If you like him this much, why don't you go as his member, huh? Oh right, it would be too small for that too, Bakugu screamed and turned around, blasts coming non-stop from his hands as he stomped his way to his room. Almost at the one aged dorms, Hatsum still felt frustrated. She didn't get to talk with Midoriya like she wanted, and now there was the show she gave in front of his classmates, not counting this whole deal with this person or persons trying to separate them. She walked quickly and with her eyes on the floor so she didn't see someone on her path and ended knocking into that person and falling on top of him her. She heard a squeal when she moved, trying to get up. Sorry, I wasn't looking where I was going to and... Wait, a squeal? She tried pressing her body against the person again, and as she expected, another squeal came. Midoriya, her head shot up, being once again very close to his face. I was just looking for you. F for me? Yes, for you. Come on, we have to talk. She said as she got up and held his hand, already dragging him once he got up. Wait a moment, Hatsung san I have to go to the dorms. It won't take much time. No, we have to talk now. It's really important. But I lost my phone. I was looking for it, and I even went to the development studio, but you were not there. Don't worry, I'll make another for you later. Just follow me. Why, you can make a phone too. Who knows? We can find out later. She wasn't letting go of him until she did whatever she wanted so Midoriya decided to go along. Still, he felt kinda nervous about his misplaced phone since it meant he couldn't answer the messages from Yayarazu. Anyway, when he noticed, they were already on 1H dorms, most precisely on Hatsum's room. As he quickly looked around, Midoriya could not help but feel that this was some kind of alternate version of his own room. The place was littered with miniatures and posters on the walls, only that they were themed after other heroes instead of only All Might all over the place. Hatsum had many models of what he thought were support items the pros used. She probably used those to get new ideas. Along the posters were also many blueprints on the walls, some with stickers apparently notes on the working of the described items. Midoriya got out of his surrounding analysis once Hatsum got him to sit at her side on her bed. She suddenly got closer to his face, making him back off a bit. She kept staring at his eyes for a little longer before returning to her place. Since she didn't say a thing, Midoriya decided to start. So, you wanted to discuss something? 
Yeah, the repairs on the gloves are going well. I'm replacing some of the parts with a lighter material so they won't stress your muscles too much. Also, I'm working on a way to power up the air blast. Oh, thanks. It's really nice of you to think about those details. I'd never think about it alone. He flashed a bright smile at her. If Midoriya looked at her for a little longer, he would notice a faint pink crawling up her face. Don't mention it. That's my job, you know. Still, it's very impressive. You always surprises me, Hatsum san though sometimes not in a way I'm very fond to. He was obviously referring to her teasing. And indeed, she always surprised him since he had never seen or expected to see Hatsum shift uneasy on her spot with her eyes focused on her black carpet. His hero instincts instantly kicked in as he laid a hand on her shoulder. Hatsum san something happened? She hesitated for a bit, opening then closing her mouth, but with a light shook her resolve was reinforced, and she spun her head to him, once again making him flinch a bit. Actually, yes. Oh, did I mess up with the gloves too much? No, no, it's more complicated than that. Oh no, I broke them, didn't I? Forget the gloves for now, this has to do with you. With me? Yes, lately I have been. Hearing some rumors and, I'm not saying that I believe it, I even told them that you were. I just wanted to, I just wanted to know. No, what exactly? Hatsum had her hands between her knees and she shifted on her place. Unknown to her, the movement pushed her bust up a bit, showing some more of the cleavage her black shirt didn't cover so well. And for a moment Midoriya's eyes traveled to the forbidden region before he mentally punched himself. Midoriya, do you have, are you, kind of, as in, maybe you have? She couldn't say it. Why couldn't she just say it? It wasn't that hard. What was wrong with her? Maybe, maybe she was afraid of the answer. If he really had a girlfriend, then eventually he would stop hanging around her. That's how it worked, right? You get to spend time with someone you like, and a girlfriend meant more than just a friend. Would she ever be able to hang around him again? Hatsum didn't knew. Her head was filled with a lot of thoughts, and she could not focus on a single one. Could it be that the person the guys mentioned before was his girlfriend? They didn't exactly made it sound like that, but they also didn't seem to be completely sure. And if no one knew for sure, then she had to ask him directly. But now that she was in front of him, the words got stuck at her throat, refusing to cross her lips and giving her a suffocating sensation. The things those girls said before and the rumors she heard flowed into her mind. Was it possible that Midoriya was involved in a relationship with many girls? That seemed impossible for her, but the burning glares she received from the girls at the one a dorms told the Pinquette that there was more than a good friendship going on between them. Good friends don't give a death sentence with a look when you walk around the person they are friends with. What if it was true? Did Midoriya faked to be a nice guy all this time? What if he was planning to hit on her too? Hatsum never thought about it before, dating a guy, that is, and one that dated other girls. She wasn't exactly known for sticking to common sense, but even she found it strange, to some extent. What should she do if he really tried to make a move on her? Should she call him a pervert? Give him a slap across the face? She watched some anime before. But what if the other part wasn't true and he really liked her? I mean for someone so clumsy and nervous, it was a surprise that Midoriya liked to spend some of his time with her, given her personality and general disregard of personal limits. How does the saying goes? Opposites attracts each other. And what if one of the girls on his class liked him? Would she be mad at Hatsum because Midoriya liked her? Well, she couldn't help it, they liked the same things, shared a passion for pro-heroes and analysis. Come to think of it, she didn't see how they wouldn't be a good couple. See, see couple? M, me and Midoriya. When did I started to think about it? Hatsum san. W what? Midoriya carefully placed a hand on her left knee, offering her a reassuring smile filled with concern. If you want to tell me something, I'm ready to hear it. I promise I'll do my best to help you out, no matter what the problem is. His smile melted her inside, shoving away all her doubts and fears. There was no way Midoriya would do things like that, and he would not leave her, even if he had a girlfriend by any miracle. 
so she steadied herself, put in a more at ease expression on her face, and turned to her green haired friend. Midoriya, are you dating someone? Huh? Back at one of dorms inside Yayurazu's room, the non official HQ of Midoriya Protection Squad, Yuraraka was ready to blow, bawling her fists so hard her knuckles were getting white. Besides the fuming brunette, Yayurazu typed away on her phone, frustrated that Midoriya wasn't answering her messages. Jairo and Suyu tried to calm down the angered girl, but to no avail. I'm gonna kick her from here to the moon, I swear. Ochako-chan, if you get any angrier than that you're going to have a heart attack. But Tsu, she held the frog girl by her shoulders, oblivious to her excessive use of strength. She came here, Hatsune came here and started to shout out a shitload about Deku-kun and her together, and in front of me. Well, she didn't see us coming, to be honest. Gyro flinched once Yuraraka hastily spun her head towards her. Right now they didn't really want to be on her path. Are you going to be at her side? I'm not at her side. I'm also angry, but what are we supposed to do? I'll tell you what, Momo-chan, did you find him? Not yet. TSC, he's not answering. Maybe he misplaced his phone. She stared at the small screen as if it would send a telepathic message to him. Yuraraka took it from her hand. Let me see it, hmm. He said earlier that he had something to do after class, but didn't say what. By that time he stopped answering, but I thought he would be with Tsuyu. Ribbit, he told me earlier that his hero costume had a hole, and he had to fix it, so we didn't see each other after class. But then where is he now? While Yayurazu thought, Ashido came into the room. Hey girls, I huh? Why is Tsuyu here? What do you mean, Mina? Well, Kayoka-chan, I saw Muscles walking around some time ago. I thought he was going to the pool as usual, but Tsu-chan is right here. Did I miss something? Yuraraka quickly got up from her seat on the bed. Mina, have you seen Hatsum on your way here? Hatsum? The one from 1H? Yeah, why you'd ask? Yuraraka's pupils shrunk to small dots. Her deku sense screamed danger all over her head. In an instant, the brunette dashed out of the room, reaching the common room at high speeds, so much that Ida barely had time to finish his warning about running on the corridors, and he almost got knocked down when the rest of the crew came after her. She better not, she better not. On Hatsum's room, Midoriya stood frozen for a minute. Had he heard it right? Yes, she asked if he was dating someone. So, how should he answer her? I, I, no. Really? No one? Yeah, no one. You really mean it? I really, really mean it. Midoriya. What is it, Hatsum san You are terrible at lying. Shit! It's not like that. I'm not DD dating anyone right and now. He could feel the heat increasing on his cheeks. Why did she ask something like that to him? What did she heard? Were people talking about him? Since when and what were they saying? Did he get exposed? His thoughts came to a halt when he heard a short laugh. He looked to his pink-haired friend and found her staring at the ceiling, her face devoid of any apparent emotion except for the small curve on the corner of her lips. Well, it was expected. What? She turned to him again, still expressionless. You are dating one of your classmates, right? Don't worry, I won't spread it around. Well, I, I didn't. It's okay, really. It would be strange if you didn't have someone by now. What do you mean, Hatsum-san? Since you are so nice and kind and quite handsome, someone would eventually get together with you. The silence fell between them and lasted for a long minute before Midoriya spoke again. Why, why did you ask that? To be honest, it's because some girls were talking about it and I kinda got curious. Not that I'm into this gossiping thing, I just wanted to, you know, hear it from the source. I see, people have been talking about it. Yeah, also, I wanted to know, for another reason. Another reason? Yeah, it's that. Normally you would hang around your girlfriend instead of some random girl so, I thought that maybe we wouldn't have as much time together like we used to. Midoriya was surprised that she was so worried about something like that. He liked to spend time with her, 
but he could never imagine this meant so much for her. Unless, there was something behind that. He gulped, not even daring to start that line of thought. Ha Hatsum san listen, I would never do something like that even if I had a real girlfriend. You are my friend and I'll care about you the same way I do now. Her eyes focused on her hands on top of her legs. Hatsum managed to bring a weak smile, but the tears were threatening to roll from the corners of her eyes. Thanks, Midoriya, really? To be honest, I... I've never had many friends. All the kids gathered around when I started to build things, but when my projects became bigger and slightly more dangerous, they slowly moved away. I can't remember of any other person I got to chat and hang around like I do with you. She sustained the smile on her lips, but the tears were already rolling free down her cheeks. She sobbed a little with her head down, unable to look at him at this state. It was at that moment that she felt a pair of warm arms wrapping around her form. She dared to look up a bit and she found Midoriya hugging her and apparently making an effort to not faint given his red face. After a moment of hesitation, she moved closer to him, snuggling on his chest while he involved her with his warm embrace. I, I know how you feel, Hatsum sen When I was a kid, I also didn't have many friends, and the one I had, well, you know about it, I guess. But it's all right now, because I'm here, and I don't plan to leave. There he goes again. Midoriya was probably the all-might number one fan in the entire world to use one of the hero's famous phrases to comfort her in this fragile state. Not that she found it bad, on the opposite, it was very endearing. Once again he managed to put a smile on her lips and shove away her bad feelings. You sure your girlfriend will be okay with you holding me like this? Her playful tone was slowly coming back to her voice. W what are you TT talking about? It's a friendly hug, plus, I don't have a... Midoriya, I know. Yours friends didn't say who, but I know you're dating someone from your class. Is it the one with the ponytail or the one with the gravity quirk? Hatam didn't see it, but Midoriya's face now looked much more serious. Hatsum san Huh, what is it? Oh, could it be the invisible girl? All of them. What? He took in a deep breath before saying it more clearly, before it barely came out in the form of a whisper. All of them. At this moment, every girl from my class is one of my girlfriends. How did he manage to say it, Midoriya didn't know. To admit it out loud and in front of Hatsum from all things. Why did he even do that? If he kept denying it, she would eventually let the topic drop probably only bringing it up again in the form of a small teasing or something, but he just told her the truth. Probably he felt she deserved to know, being a close person to him and all. He trusted her and honestly, sharing this with someone felt like a ten-ton weight being removed from his shoulders. Maybe he should do the same to his classmates. Aha, ahahahaha Midoriya, I didn't know you had that in you. Funny joke, really. Now that he thought about it, Midoriya didn't really consider what her reaction would be, and that one seemed very forced, to say the least. No, I mean it. It looks ridiculous, but it's the truth. Ahaha, haha, I, you, um, wow. Yeah, to be honest, I never expected that to happen. ISC, well, good for you then. Being surrounded by pretty girls must be every guy's dream. PP, probably. But, don't you think this is wrong? W. Well, it depends on the way you look at it, I guess. I mean, in the past people made this all the time, so if everyone agrees, there's no problem at all. Probably. Maybe. Yeah, you are right. Probably. The awkward silence returned, and to add up Midoriya was still holding her close to him. By now he was completely aware of the soft and warm feeling of her chest pressing against his body. For a brief moment he allowed his mind to think that her cup size was the same as Yayurazu's, if not slightly bigger. The shifting of her body under his arms banished such impure thoughts away. Wrapped by his arms Hatsum now faced Midoriya, her eyes still with a glint of tears. She inched closer to his face as she talked, her voice low and timid, almost like a whisper. Midoriya, I was thinking. You are a really nice guy, and I never got to know someone so kind and endearing like you. So, 
even if you have, you know, a ton of girls already, that I'm sure must love you to no end. I was thinking if, if you could, if we could. He was frozen in place. Yellow eyes were locked on green ones. The more he looked, more he got the feeling that something very familiar was coming, and he had to take action before it happened. Hatsum san we should stop here. His voice was low and filled with care, as if he was afraid she would break in the case he suddenly let go of her. He moved his arms, but once she felt the warmth source getting away Hatsum held on his shirt, pressing her body even more on his. Please, just one time. Yuraraka sped by the sidewalks like a runner at the Olympics. From all the possible reasons to discover where was the 1H dorms, this was by far the worst. Her eyes were burning with intense anger, but at the same time her face was one of fear, borderline despair in fact. She dared not imagine what could be going on with her Deku while he went missing. It had been two dangerous hours since his last answer to Yayurazu, and at least half an hour since Ashido spotted him, and then crazy Crosshair's eyes. What could happen in the meantime? What could Yuraraka do with him on that time? She hurried herself, if it was possible to go even faster, and after her the rest of the harem followed, just as worried and angered as the brunette. Once brown eyes met the sign that read 1H, Yuraraka made a sharp turn, heading towards the door of the building. She busted in, breathing heavy and looking around frantically. Different from her dorms, there wasn't a single living soul on the common room, and the silence was so absolute you could hear a feather falling on the floor. Well, there was one living soul, which was also the source of some noise. The figure of a small teen with light yellow short hair, round eyes with marks under them to put Aizawa to shame, poked from his seat at the couch once he heard someone busting through the door. His eyes scanned the area and found the intense gaze of Yuraraka, then immediately some gears shifted on his head. Hatsum, where? Yuraraka was barely containing her really serious aura. Spooking her classmates could lead them to cover her in some way. Third floor, left side. Her room has a cog on the door. Um, did one of her gizmos blow up on you or something? Huh? Well? Oh, forget I asked. Just do whatever you have to do. And please don't disturb the others on their rooms. Thought the walls are all soundproof because of Hatsum. The short boy said nonchalantly and then waved a hand at her. So people coming after her was somehow expected. She brushed away this brief thought. Her reasons to be here were completely different. Just as Yuraraka dashed upstairs the other girls came in, looking around and searching for Hatsum, Yuraraka and Midoriya. Then a voice came from the couch and a small hand pointed them a direction. Third floor, left side, girl with the round face is already there, please don't blow up anything. Confusion took over them for a moment before Yayurazu, Ashido, Suyu and Jairo ran to where Yuraraka headed to. Please, just one time, can we kiss? KK kiss, T that's what you want. Midoriya instantly let go of her, much to Hatsum's dismay. Why, yeah, I thought about it and I think I wanted to, you know, see how is it like. Hatsum poked her index fingers together and looked to the sides, unable to face him directly as she spoke. Her cheeks were as pink as her hair. Meanwhile, internally Midoriya felt relieved, so much that he breathed out. So she just wants a kiss? Practically a cakewalk, given the things he had done so far. Wait just a minute, would the girls be mad at him if he did kiss Hatsum? It was just a kiss, probably just a peck on the lips. After all they did together, it wouldn't harm, right? Right? As doubt consumed Midoriya, Hatsum noticed two things. One, he had something else on his mind since he suddenly felt relieved when she said it was a kiss. Two, he was considering whether he should kiss her or not. Right now he was mumbling so she could hear some of it. But if he's considering it, does it mean that? I have a chance? Could it be? While Midoriya kept on his mumbling, she slowly got closer to him again inch by inch, her eyes focused on his green ones as they darted left and right in a swirl of thoughts that must be crossing his mind. It was only when she leaned her hand on his leg that his attention turned back to her, of course, with a jolt from the green teen. His face had nervousness plastered all over while Hatsum held a look with mixed feelings. 
doubt, curiosity, fear, eagerness, she wasn't sure about how she was feeling right now, but she knew that she wanted to be closer to Midoriya, to never leave his side. Those soft-looking lips curved into an uneasy smile. They called for her. Patsum inched closer and Midoriya inched back, but she held him in place so eventually he fell with his back on the bed and she climbed on top of him. Her usual energetic aura and personality were gone. This Hatsum looked completely different, cute and adorable, instead of blunt and impulsive. She clearly didn't have a single idea of what to do, so much that Midoriya really considered taking the lead, but he kept holding to his sense of loyalty towards his harem, and that sounded ridiculously ironical. But at some point, that point being her closeness making his body reacts in undesired ways, he had to put a stop. Hatsum san I think we really should stop here. But, once again she had tears rolling down her cheeks. I get it that you have many, you know. I just wanted to know, how's it like? It is something really important, this thing you want to know. So, you should keep that to someone you really like, someone that also likes you. You, you don't like me? No, I like you, just not, in that way. Do you, do you like me in that way? I don't know, maybe. I think so. It never happened to me before, and I barely heard about it. It's okay, I was kind of the same as you. Am I not pretty enough? What? Of course not, Hatsum san I know I'm not the girliest girl around. Sometimes I even skip shower to keep working at my babies, and I can be pretty noisy and straightforward. So, I don't know if I fit the role of pretty girl. Don't say something like that. You are beautiful the way you are. Really? So, can you give me just one proof? This is not the reason why we shouldn't do it. Is it what your friends told me about? The revelry in the dark? Midoriya could imagine what that meant. No, that's not it. At least not only that. Then what could it be? You said I should keep it to someone I really liked. Well, that's you, Midoriya. She was sobbing and her tears were threatening to turn into huge falls. She was now practically hovering above him her ample bosom filling a good part of his vision field. Is it because I have a more developed chest? Do I look like a... No, Hatsum, don't even think about it, Sai, to be honest. I find you to be very attractive, but the situation I'm in right now, it's complicated, and I don't want to drag you into this. She let out a small laugh between her quiet crying and sobbing. What? Nothing. I'm just happy that at least you find me attractive. Chalk one up for me. Also, I find you very attractive too, and kind, and very, very cute. Thanks, I guess. She lowered herself, resting her chest on his, but before she could reach for his lips, he held her by her shoulders. Midoriya, please, I can't think of anyone else I would give, my first kiss. Hatsum Sen. Since we won't be more than friends, I wanted you to take it, like a gift or something. But it, it isn't my. SHHH, I know. I understand. Anyway, I'd really like if you did this for me. I think it is very selfish of me, but I want my first love to take my first kiss. Is it, is it too stupid? No, no, Hatsum, it isn't stupid, neither selfish. Actually, is really beautiful. I see. Well, T, thank you for listening anyway, I should. She was about to move, but once again Midoriya held her in place, this time keeping her close. Where are you going? Didn't you want me to, T, take your first KK kiss? Midoriya, I can do something like that to my friend, since she cares so much about me. Hatsum leaned in closer until their noses touched. She was so nervous she couldn't help but smile and laugh, making Midoriya laugh too. She ruffled his green locks and closed her eyes, taking in a breath, but to her surprise Midoriya closed the tiny gap, connecting his lips on her in a way so tender and soft that she thought she would melt. Something clicked inside her mind. The jolt of electricity that ran across her body told her, no, it made it clear and determined that she loved him. It was just a brush of lips that got just a little deeper, nothing too flashy or even passionate, but to her it meant everything. Time stopped moving around her as she felt his softness caressing her mouth, his messy green hair brushing against her forehead, his sweet scent of cinnamon and mint. 
If she could, Hatsum would stay here forever, with her hands caressing his hair and her body being warmed by his, sharing this moment for eternity. Time moved again as the door of her room was busted open with a kick. The loud bang from the door draw the attention of the duo lying on the bed. And there, standing still like a statue at first shocked, then burning with rage like a thousand suns. The brunette's whole body shook and her hands balled into tight fists. Her eyes, fierce and filled with flames of sheer anger and mad jealousness glared at the scene in front of her. Yuraraka Ochako has arrived. Startled, Hatsum lifted her head and Midoriya brought his back as much as he could and when they found the source of noise and insert a to-be-continued arrow here. Dread took over them as the very sight of Yuraraka sent a chill so powerful through their spines they wondered for a split second if the room had been frozen. It was like death itself stood at the door. Hatsum froze in place, even with her compromising position. Her head would roll on the floor if she moved a muscle, she was sure. As for Midoriya, his mind stopped, leaving him with a shocked and terrified expression on his face, his eyes as wide as they could be and his pupils reduced to simple dots. His hands were still on Hatsum's arms. After some seconds that seemed to last an eternity, the brunette, now completely surrounded by a demonic aura took a step in the room, making the duo in front of her flinch, but before she could take another step Ashido came from behind and used a powerful tackle to knock her on the ground, proceeding to pin the brunette's arms on her backs. After her Yayurazu, Tsuyu and Jairo entered the room, finding Hatsum and Midoriya, then freezing in place with wide eyes and shocked faces. It all happened so fast Midoriya didn't have any time to process, but thanks to the major shock, his brain returned to normal work just to go on overclock. Panic hit him like a loaded truck and instantly got up, or at least tried, which resulted in a quite strong headbutt with Hatsum. The impact kicked her brain on and she immediately backed off from him. Too bad she still kept sitting on his lap. Recovering from the shock, the other girls started to move. Yamomo slowly raised a shaking arm, her slender finger pointing to the pink-haired girl. Words dared to escape her mouth in the form of a stutter. Then the shock on her face morphed into anger, and she finally broke the silence. You! Hatsune flinched again. Once she said that all the uncalled visitors went on search and destroy mode, and she was the target. But before anyone could move or say anything, Ashido went flying to the side. Yuraraka managed to free one of her hands and quickly got up, making a throw with the pink-skinned girl in a smooth move. Her hunter eyes laid again on Hatsum, and then she went to the offensive. It was like a tigress jumping at her prey. The next second Yuraraka had already knocked Hatsum on the bed with her hands trying to grasp at the pinkette's neck. Hatsum was barely holding on, using her arms as a shield to the vice claws aiming for her throat. You bitch, die! Yuraraka, making a perfect dub of Bakugu, raised her left fist and would have landed it straight on Hatsune's face if it wasn't for Tsuyu holding it with her tongue, thought she was struggling against the gravity girl. Jairo and Yayarazu ran and held her back, but Yuraraka was surprisingly strong. Could it be that her rage state amplified her physical strength? As soon as she saw an opening Hatsume rolled out of the bed and made a run to the corridor, but got stopped by Ashido, who just got up. Where do you think you are going? Anywhere a mile away from here. Get back here, you pink trash pile. While Ashido held Hatsum firmly by her wrist, on the other side Yuraraka slowly dragged her restrainers, who tried desperately to hold her still. Hatsum started to panic. LL look, I can explain, I was... You are dead, you cunt, dead, you hear me. Yuraraka, calm down. Let me go, Momo. She was kissing Izuku. She was kissing him. With that sewer mouth, I'm gonna beat her until she gets flat. Ochako-chan, you are going to be expelled. Ribbit. I don't care. That whore touched my Izuku with those damn huge boobs. I'm gonna kill that cow. Oh, for the love of your Araka, shut the hell up. Jairo grabbed her phone and used the small speakers to channel her quirk. Heartbeat fuzz. The speakers toned down a lot of her power, so it only stunned Yuraraka. 
giving her a loud ringing on her right ear. Now that she was at least contained, the remaining girls turned to Hatsum, who felt she went from the fridge to the oven. At this moment, the only thing she could do was show them a wavering smile. Ashido closed and locked the door. Yairazu was finishing the knots that restrained a still dizzy Uraraka. Tsuyu and Jairo burned Hatsum with stairs while the pink-haired girl was on her knees on the carpet like a condemned in the deaf hallway, and with a dumbfounded face, Midoriya watched wordlessly. Uraraka tied and door locked, they all gathered around Hatsum, who decided to look at the floor and at the floor only. So, what are we gonna do about her? What do you mean, Mina? We can't do anything. Kayoka, do you think I'm gonna let this pass? No, I feel like piercing those crosshair's eyes, but we can't do something like that. How much toxin do you think she can handle, Ribbit? All right, stop it. You all, both Midoriya and Hatsum, felt relieved that Yeyurazu was going to be the light of reason here. If you're planning something like this, then we need to decide how to dispose the body later. And she failed miserably. At this rate, they would actually do as they were saying, so Midoriya decided to speak. Girls, can we like, discuss this? He stopped mid-sentence because all the heads snapped to his direction. It would surely be bad to Ishido's neck. Midoriya. He swallowed nothing. Then just like that Yayarazu walked to him, held his hand on hers, and almost with tears on her eyes, she spoke. Are you okay, since when you were here? Did she force you on other things? Seeing where this was going, Midoriya was quick to explain the whole deal. I'm fine, I'm fine. Now I came here on my own, Hatsum Sen didn't force me to do nothing. Wait, what? You heard me. We were talking, then the subject turned into relationships and I kind of got carried away. Also, she knows about the whole harem thing Midoriya deadpanned while Yayurazu had a poker face. When she put her hands on his shoulders, he started to think that telling them all this in that way was a bad idea. Midoriya, remember our lessons about being a good boy? Why, yes. Let me tell you something. Good boys do not get along with other girls besides the ones from the harem. JJ, just a minute. It was a kiss. Only a kiss. Only? Are you saying that kissing us doesn't mean anything to you? Ashido joined Yayurazu. Of course not. I mean that this one with her was just a kiss between friends, that's all. Oi, last time I checked friends don't kiss like that, unless you have been secretly making out with Todoroki Jiro joined them, followed by Tsuyu. On his room, Todoroki sneezed. See, come on girls, you know I'd never cheat on you. And yet here we are. Ribbit, what exactly you plan to do after that? Tsuyu crossed her arms, wanting his answer, and the rest of them made the same. No matter what I say, they'll be mad at me, won't they? Midoriya took a deep breath and was about to answer, but he stopped when he saw Yuraraka on the background, shouting something though the gag Yayurazu put on her and trying to kick Hatsum. The girls followed his line of sight and Yayurazu instantly regret not tying her legs too. Midoriya walked past the girls and kneed besides Yuraraka. She turned to him and started to say something, or at least tried. Mmm. Wait, give me a sec. Fly much better. Now, Deku-kun, untie me so I can beat that sorry fat ass. Yuraraka, wait, this is not what it looks like. You see, it looks like that busty bitch tried to steal you from me and... Now, listen here, round face. You have been insulting and threatening me non-stop since you came here, Hatsum, kinda ticked off, got up and faced Yuraraka. It's called saying the truth. Bitch, Yuraraka got up, tied as she was. She walked to the pink-haired girl and got as close as she could, bumping on Hatsum's chest in the process. Stay. Away. From him. Make me. Eyes narrowed and shooting lightnings, Yuraraka tried to press herself even further on Hatsum, and ended feeling even more frustrated and angry due to the resistance she encountered. He's my boyfriend. Mine. Well, he's my friend. Best friend. How can you even compare this? Doesn't matter, I'm not leaving him. You think you're special, with those balloons hanging on your chest or something. Kupi, what are you talking about? 
If Midoriya likes them bigger, I, I, I can't help it. You are lucky my arms are tied. You know you'll never have him, right? Like I would let you, Yoraka was taunting her, and by the way Hatsum looked down, she could easily crush her hopes if there was any to begin with. On the other side, Hatsum knew what the brunette said was true, but she didn't want to believe it. She refused to give up like that. You, you can't do this. Tell him who he can or cannot see and talk to. You don't control his life and he's not your pet or toy. Controlling. I'm just looking after him. I only want the best in the world for my Izuku. And you definitely don't fit in the definition. So you say what's best for him? How's this not controlling his life? Do you even care for him or this is just your way of getting satisfied? Hatsum actually made Yuraraka flinch and recoil a bit. Not only her, the girls and Midoriya too, all of them got surprised that Yuraraka, of all people, had to take a step back. But it wasn't the end for her. She still had an ace on her sleeve. Her face gained a calm expression, as if she didn't have to worry about nothing. Her eyelids were half-closed, and her voice changed from the altered tone to a much calmer one. Say whatever you want, it doesn't change the fact that he's my boyfriend, not yours. As so what? A lot of couples break up. You would love if that happened, right? Anyway, do you think you know Izuku? Honestly? Of course I know him. What do you mean by that? Yuraraka leaned in closer, always keeping her eyes locked on Hatsum's yellow ones. What he likes, what he doesn't, the feeling of his touch. I can, I could work around it. Me, Hatsum-san, do you know how it feels like? She leaned in more, getting closer to Hatsum's right ear. Yuraraka whispered so low that she barely heard, and yet it sounded like a loud scream to her. Izuku's member inside you? Do you know how it feels to be with him? While Hatsum got completely red and her eyes widened, Yuraraka let out a light laugh. The pink-haired girl processed what she just heard, then something else clicked on her mind as she glanced to her side. All of them, all the other girls were the same, right? It was hard to believe, but the look on their eyes, it was true. How should Hatsum feel about it? It never crossed her mind that Midoriya would do something like that. Maybe not getting involved with him was the best thing to do after all. No, she was better than this, he was better than this even if Midoriya really did. What Yuraraka said, she still considered him her friend. He was still the person she learned to love. No lewd acts and certainly no crazy girl would change her mind on that. And after that, what should she do? If Hatsum never thought about dating someone until recently, well, having sex was miles away from her mind. No matter how she looked, Yuraraka had an advantage, one that she couldn't compensate with just being a good friend. Thought Hatsum hated to admit it, she lost to her. I know what's best for him. I know what makes him happy, what makes him hard, and you. You can talk as much as you want, but you are just another girl on his life. Get on my level before you try to steal him from me. Visibly satisfied with the sad expression of her rival, a wide smile made its way on Yuraraka's mouth. Hatsum, who was standing tall and brave a minute ago, now looked at the floor, hope completely gone from her eyes. Yuraraka watched along with the others as she slowly turned around and left the room. Her own room. Well, that should do. Now she know where her place is. Are you done? Midoriya's voice sounded from behind Yuraraka. Sure, now that she... She turned around with her usual smile, completely different from the contempt face she held as she looked at Hatsum. Her smile, though, met with cold eyes and something she never had seen before, an upset Midoriya Izuku. Not angry, not frustrated or nervous, just upset. Good, he said plainly and walked past her, without even looking on her eyes. Yuraraka, shocked by the reaction, turned around again and started following him. Deku-kun, where are you going? He stopped at the door and answered without looking at her. Where do you think? I could see her tears from a mile away. But Deku-kun, she tried to. Not now, Yuraraka. When he finally looked at her, she wished he didn't. On his eyes, there was only one feeling. I can't believe you did this. The other, who were just watching until now, tried to reason with the visibly distraught boy. 
Midoriya, wait, Yayarazu called him but was quickly cut. You all too, what were you thinking? Why would I change you by the first girl that I met around? No, we just... Just what, Tsu? What did you had on your head? Yoraka, Jiro, Ashido, Yayarazu? What could possibly lead to this mess? Hatsum, she made us do this, Deku-kun. How? She never made me any harm on the opposite, I always have fun with her. We, we thought that she could, force her ways with you, if she got close enough, Yuraraka was timid, like a child who felt guilty for breaking something. Not only her, any girl, to be honest, Ribbit. He just wanted to protect you. I doubt that, Gyro, you all. Hatsum is right. Even though I love you and I know you love me, you can't control my life. You can't tell me who I'm allowed to talk to or drag me away every time another comes to talk with me or drive them away or try to keep track of me all the time. Each one of them felt a sinking feeling of guilty once they heard their strategies being mentioned. He turned to leave again but Yuraraka ran to him, leaning her forehead on his back. Deku-kun, let's, let's talk about it with more care. You see, I... Not now, Yuraraka. But, Deku-kun... Not. Now. I'm not in the mood. Midoriya left, trying to find Hatsum, leaving his harem frozen in place on Hatsum's room. They eventually left, but the shock from what happened lasted for the rest of the day. They only got to see him again at dinner, and then he locked himself into his room. There, Midoriya used his retrieved phone to message Hatsum, asking to talk with the girl, but his messages didn't even get the viewed status. As for the girls, they appeared drained of all life force. During dinner, no one besides Bakugou could ignore the depressive aura around the group. When Hagakure heard from them what happened and Midoriya refused to answer when she knocked on his door, she started to cry, as if she had done something unforgivable. Sure, Midoriya didn't plan to be mad at them for a long time, but he had to fix things up with Hatsum before he could think about them in the same way again. Another thing that was clear, the most affected was Yuraraka. She didn't even try to eat dinner, and she had that face devoid of any emotion and warmth. She walked to her room like a ghost, pale and lifeless, and there she remained until the next day. It had been a week since the last time he talked with Hatsum, even seen her at all. He went to the development studio, but he didn't find her there, and he couldn't think of any other place she could be. Her classmates told him that she barely spent time at the dorms, only coming to sleep and eat, both often. 247 Unseen Messages What should I do? Thought he wasn't upset anymore with his harem, the situation between them was still complicated. With the rest of the class they acted normally, but Midoriya still kept some space and that didn't go unnoticed by his classmates, thought the boys opted by not making any comments. Yuraraka was still depressed, and Midoriya still felt sad for not being able to talk with Hatsum. She felt hungry, but she didn't want to go get lunch because he would eventually find her. She had tons of projects to work with, but every time she entered the studio, she remembered of the time they spent here, she remembered of him, and at that point the tears would fall non-stop. It had been a week and Hatsum was still at this wrecked state, and what was worse, she knew she was making Midoriya worry about her, given the tons of messages that appeared on her phone day after day. She found in that some comfort, a sign that he cared about her and wanted to see her well, but she didn't have the strength to read what he had to say. Probably he'd want to see her and talk about what happened, but she didn't want to. She could not. What Yoraka said, thought being a hope destroyer was true. She wasn't on the same level when it came to her relationship with Midoriya, and she hated to admit it. She had been wandering around and doing whatever came to her mind in a form of evade Midoriya and try to collect her thoughts, but the words of the brunette never left her mind. Yuraraka and Midoriya. They had done something that put them in a different place from where she stood. Could she even think of him as a possible boyfriend if she couldn't do the same things Yuraraka did? It was at that moment that she got up from the bed she was lying. One thing was for sure, Midoriya may not like her the same way she liked him, but he admired her skills for inventing. Wasting time here would make him sad, and it wouldn't do any good to her either, so she got up and headed to the studio. 
If someone asked, she would say she was cutting onions if something got on her eyes. She couldn't keep sulking like that forever. That's it. I have to finish his gloves. I'll ask someone else to deliver them, but only I can make them work properly. He needs those gloves or else he'll keep hurting himself. With newfound determination, Hatsum grabbed her thick black sleeveless shirt and headed to the development studio. If she remembered well, Power Loader Sensei wouldn't be there today, and many of her classmates preferred to work on their rooms, so if she was lucky enough she would have the entire place all to herself, which would save her some embarrassing explanations. And luck shone a bright smile to her as there wasn't a single living soul on the studio besides her. So she quickly got to work on Midoriya's support gloves. As she expected, the tears rolled down her cheeks. Just seeing the items made her remember the moments of fun they shared, the funny and cute reactions she got from him while she teased him, the way he showed his care for her, and it broke her heart into tiny bits to know that she wasn't going to talk with him again, play with him again, feel his warmth again, see his tender and sweet smile. Damn you tears, I can't see what I'm working on if you keep coming, she joked with herself, her voice a mix of sobs and a playful tone. Hotsum then heard the door open. Startled, she could not focus on a proper reaction, failing on her attempt to fix her face and hide her tears. When she looked at the doorway, the tears became waterfalls and she froze. He had to come, didn't he? The guys told me he had been coming here the entire week, but I thought he'd just give up by now. Well, I should know. Midoriya stood at the door, and once he noticed her crying form, his face gained a tinge of sadness and maybe guilty. He slowly walked in, and Hatsum responded by taking a step back, but once he saw that he ran after her. She barely had time to react, and in the next moment she was involved into a world of warmth and cinnamon with mint. At that moment, leaning on his chest, Hatsum let out all the tears she had been holding back without much success. Midoriya was also lost. He never saw Hatsum at such a fragile state. He wasn't expecting this, but he had been preparing himself for this. During the week, he talked constantly with his mom by the phone about what he should say to someone in the situation Hatsum was. Of course he didn't give the details because it was the problem of a friend after all. He also searched for All Might's advice, which consisted of doing what he felt was right and put all his feelings on it and so he did. Midoriya held her close to him and hugged Hatsum with as much feeling as he could. He made his best to transmit his feelings to her while she sobbed on his chest, hoping to free her from all this sadness and depression. He had to save her. H hey, it's been a while Hatsum could not stop her sobs from cutting her sentences. Yeah, a whole week, sorry about it. No, please don't say that I'm the one to blame. You say HHH, don't say something like that, it's not your fault. But I knew, you had someone else, and I still insisted. And I said I'd do it for a friend, didn't I? Her arms wrapped around his torso and Hatsum hugged Midoriya, dropping more tears on his chest. Midoriya, I'm sorry, your girlfriends must be mad at you. She searched in herself the strength to contain her cries, at least a bit. I can take handle this later. Right now, I have to take care of you. Why? Why worry so much about me? I already said. You are my friend, right? And what about Roundface said? About you, you know what? Yeah, that part is true. But you're still important to me. Important. She was important to him, just as he was to her. I shouldn't be here, really. Every time I get here, I start crying and all. I noticed... But it's okay, I'm here now. A light laugh escaped her mouth. Sure, Midoriya. Yes? How is it like to have SSCX? Midoriya stiffed and Hatsum felt it, so she couldn't help but laugh a little bit again. Well, I, I think it's nice. That's it? Nice? Yeah, it's much more than just nice, but it's kinda embarrassing to say, and to you of all people. Silence fell on the studio. Midoriya, can you show me? Show what? Whatever Yuraraka and the others has seen you. Hatsum-san, that's not how it works. I know, but I just want to be with you. Why I can't have that? 
You can, but we don't have to, well, do that. Sai Uraraka, she won't see me in any other way unless I step up to her level. And you're the only one that can help me. You two don't have to make a competition out of it. No, it's not like that, at least for me. I mean it, I want to be someone that you can see as a possible girlfriend. She lifted her yellow eyes to meet his green ones. I want to be someone important on your life. I want to build support items for you so you don't have to hurt yourself. I want to help you fulfill your dream of being a hero and just maybe have your help to achieve my dreams too. I want to be more to you than just a friend, just another girl in your life. Midoriya became wordless. Her tears ceased as she spoke. He could feel it, every word was filled to the brim with her emotions. This was her everything, all that she thought and had at her heart. To think that once again he would have to face someone with so many intense feelings. He also wanted to help her fulfill her dreams. If it wasn't for her, he wouldn't have reached the point he was, and he was so much more than glad for it. But the question was, could he correspond her feelings? After what happened, he once again felt that he wasn't worthy of the love and attention he received. Due to his indecision and hesitation, not only her but all the girls from his harem were hurt and feeling sad. He had to make more assertive decisions, or else everyone would keep getting hurt around him. So, once again, could Midoriya return her feelings? Yes. Yes, he could. He could, and he did. Lifting her chin a bit with his hand, he quickly captured her on a kiss. This time, the kiss was much more meaningful. It was deeper, more passionate, and soft at the same time. She let him take the lead, guiding her through this unknown territory that was love for her. His tongue asked for permission to cross the limits, and she gladly allowed. Hatsum didn't know exactly what to expect, but so far everything he did was amazing. In mere seconds all her sadness, depression and lack of energy were washed away. She felt happy near him, and she didn't want to ever let go of him again. Eager to have more, to taste more of him, Hatsum pressed herself against Midoriya, pushing him back and knocking him on the ground. The fall nearly winded him, and he found himself looking at her bright yellow eyes. Ops stepped on a bolt. Oh yeah, the bolt. With her body on top of his, the cleavage of her black shirt giving a huge view of her chest, Midoriya noticed that his body functions were kicking in, and so did Hatsum. One of her legs was between his, so she felt something getting bigger and harder down there. Red took over her face as she realized what that meant. Not that Hatsum never teased him through body contact, but this new type of reaction was completely new to her. If nothing, this meant that he found her attractive. Luckily, he felt something deeper than biological instincts towards her. She had to know. Midoriya, is there any chance for me, in your life, I mean? You, you really want to take part on this? I know I, I know I love you, but I don't want you to just do it for me. If it isn't asking too much, I want you to love me too, Midoriya. I, Sai, you know I have a very special relationship. They all agreed to s share me, so this is how things got like this. I can, I can share too. I don't know if they'll want me in, but if it means I can have you close to me like this, then I'll do whatever it takes. Hatsum, okay, I'll make this work, somehow. Really? Really, really. After all, I love you Hatsum. Hatsum slowly brought a hand to cover her mouth. Tears of joy ran over her cheeks. Seriously, she was starting to get on the Midoriya level of crying. Midoriya, finding her even more cute than before, gently removed her hand and kissed her again. He would need a way to convince his other girlfriends because there was no way he was letting go of Hatsum now. That said, there was still one problem yet to be solved. Hatsum, about what you said earlier? Huh? That part of doing with you? The same I do with my, you know, that... Oh, that, I, um, should we? Oh, only if you want to. We don't need to do it right now. Well, it does looks like a test to get in. A test? Yeah. As in, to get in you have to F-U-C-K. I hope it doesn't reach this level. Midoriya. Yes? I'm hot. Me too. They kissed again, but now it was much more heated. 
Between their kisses, Midoriya reached for her waist, lifting her shirt a bit and running his hands over her back and sides. Hatsum was quick to remove his blue jacket and black shirt, exposing his toned chest and abs. A wide smile crept on her lips. Found something interesting? he asked playfully. Very, very interesting, she said, and didn't waste time as her hands ran over his body, feeling every part and every muscles, much like how she used to take his measures, but with a completely different reason now. With some help, her shirt was gone, and now Midoriya had a full view of her ample bosom, held tight by a rosy bra with a tiny cog in the middle. Now that she had his attention, it was her turn to make the jokes. Enjoying the view? A lot. But there's something puzzling me. Did you expect something high-tech? Maybe, but I have no complaints. Really, I have one. What? She leaned in and whispered on his ear. They look better without the bra. Oh. And in an instant, the piece of cloth was gone. She was covered with reason, Midoriya thought, as he looked at her huge mounds while she moved up and down, pressing her chest on his. He then cupped one of her bosoms and sucked at the other, making Hatsun voice her first moans. Wow, he knows what he's doing. She let out a small squeal when she felt a pair of fingers run over her crotch, instantly flaring up her core. Midoriya was making her feel amazing, but the pants had to go, and the rosy panties too. He noticed how fast she got wet, a clear sign that she was eager, but he had to take it bit by bit. She had never done it before after all, so first he slid one finger inside her folds, then another, and slowly moved them, making Hatsun shudder and moan, short breathed and bright red. Not wanting to be the only one having fun, as fast as her clouded mind allowed, Hatsum lowered his pants and underwear, reaching for his already hard member and wrapping it with her hand. She stroked him at the same pace he fingered her. Her eyes were focused on his, slowly being filled with desire for more. The more he pleased her, more she wanted, more the heat inside her increased. She felt something building up inside her, an unknown sensation, but very welcome since Midoriya was the one causing it. Between sharp breaths and moans, Hatsum had her first orgasm, a whole new experience that made her body go numb for a moment. It took her a minute to fully recover, and after that Midoriya positioned himself to penetrate her. Are you ready? It's going to hurt at first. It's okay, I trust you. I'm ready. Patsum took a deep breath in and nodded to Midoriya. Her eyes widened as she felt him parting her insides with his member and winced when he reached her hymen. It stretched a bit, and then it hurt. It hurt. But he was kind and patient, remaining immobile while her face had any sign of pain or discomfort. The pain turned into pleasure that took over her whole body. His hot member inside her, she was loving this new sensation, and even more when he started to move, sliding in and out her, stretching her walls and hitting places that made her go crazy. Ah, hum, this is ah awesome, Midoriya. You're ah, amazing too, but Hatsum ha, you can use... My first name, ha. Huh? Oh, okay, ah, so big, Ayazuku. So you can, mm, call me by mine too young. Mei wasn't the only one losing focus. Izuku felt her walls wrap around his shaft, her huge boobs bounced every time their bodies collided, and her moans were completely enticing. He sped up a bit and started thrusting harder, while his hands held her firm round ass. She felt tight, almost crushing, but really soft too, and very hot. May started to move her hips, matching his pace and slamming their bodies together again and again. Her hands, supported on his shoulders, held him with increasing strength as she moved with more energy. Her eyes were focused on him and him only, thought they seemed clouded by a mist. She bit her lower lip while moaning louder than before. Hmm, yes, ah, Izuku, your member, it's so good, Ah, have me more. Ah, yeah, I love you. So, so much. Ah. I love ha. I love you too, May. She was near her limit. He could tell by the way she looked, her eyes almost rolling up. He was close to climax. May, I'm almost ah. Do it. I want to ah ah. I want to came too. Izuku. The surge of energy flared up, creating sparks from his body. Ah, ah, Izuku, 
I'm at my climax, ah, Izuku. May. They came together. For the second time May had an orgasm, but his one was much more intense, clouding her mind with sheer pleasure and bliss. She felt his hot seed mixing with her juices inside her, her wall tightening around his member. She was short-breathed and her heart beat fast. Her body was lazy to respond her commands. So, this is how it feels like, you're a Raka. May tried to suppress the smile, but she couldn't. Not that Izuku noticed it. For him, she was just happy like him. He never got tired of this. Well, actually, yes, a lot to be honest. For a moment he wondered how he was supposed to please all these beautiful ladies. Did he bit more than he could chew? That he would discover later. Right now, a new problem appeared, much more urgent and hard to deal with. May's eyes widened. She didn't even need to look to know who it was. After so many insults towards her, she would recognize that voice anywhere. Izuku also knew that voice, though he was used with a much calmer and not menacing at all tone. Mei slowly lifted her body and sat on Izuku's lap. Her back was against the door. She slowly turned around and much to Izuku's surprise, her face didn't have a single drop of fear, unlike her last encounter with this person. Instead, May held a smug smile crossing her mouth and her eyes were taunting, as if she wanted to say that she claimed him, even though others said she could not. And with that in your face look, she stared at the brunette at the door. For some reason, May enjoyed seeing the fuming form of Yuraraka. Oh, Yuraraka-san, long time no see. Yuraraka closed the door behind her with a loud bang, then walked in and stopped in front of the pink-haired girl. Meanwhile, Izuku looked at everything in terror. Here we go again, he thought. You, how did you... Got to have him? Easy. I asked, and he said yes. Yuraraka gasped and looked at the green teen, who only managed to lift his hands and elbows. Yuraraka lowered her head. She was shaking with anger and her hands were rolled up into tight fists. This, this wasn't supposed to happen. It should be just us, his true lovers. But then, out of nowhere, you appeared and, and, I'm gonna erase you. Both Mei and Izuku flinched at the burst of rage, and she barely escaped from Yuraraka's hands, scurrying away. Izuku watched dumbfounded as Yuraraka pursued Mei, still naked, around the studio. It took him a minute to process this information, then he quickly lifted his pants, got up and went after Yuraraka, holding her back before she could put her hands on Mei's neck. Yuraraka, calm down. Don't tell me to calm down, Izuku, she f ucked with you. That dirty hoe f ucked with you. I know, she asked and I did it, and don't call her that. What do you mean you did it? I mean that she didn't force me, as you must be thinking. Yororaka instantly stopped struggling. She turned around with eyes filled with tears and buried her head on his chest, hitting him with her fists, but with the strength of a baby. Waha, Izuku, you cheater. You said you wouldn't let any girl have her ways with you. She's not any girl, she loves me, and I love her. The crying stopped, and she looked at him again with a skeptical face. You kidding me, right? No, why would I? What happened with the I'll always love you, Ochako? I still love you, and I love Mei too. It's the same with the girls. Mei? No, this is no way like what we have. Our harem was supposed to share you because we loved you and we were all friends. She can't get in too. Why not? I like him as much as you do, Hatsum shouted, now with her black shirt that barely reached her thighs. It's not like him, it's love him, and I tell you that you can't love him more than me. You want to repeat that? Do you think you have a chance? You could be surprised. Want to see it for yourself. Try me, bitch. At this point, they were already pushing each other with their foreheads. Midoriya had to go there and separate them, but at that moment Yuraraka cupped his cheeks with her hands and locked him into a deep and kinder rough kiss. When she let go of him, she glared at Hatsum. See? It's obvious he loves me. Ochako. Hatsum, indignant, followed suit and locked the boy on a kiss of her own, much softer and tender than the previous one. What did you say? Of course he loves me more. May. You call that a kiss? You barely made him hard. What are you talking about? 
yours looked like you were going to suck the life out of him. Oh, you bet I'd suck, but another thing. Girls. I that's, that's lewd. It's not lewd. My love for him makes this the most pure thing in the world, Yuraraka said as she latched herself on his right arm. It doesn't make any sense. It's still lewd, and you are still talking like a bitch Hatsum held on his left arm, glaring daggers at her rival. You too, I... Who you're calling a bitch, bitch? Who has the round face here? It makes me look cute. What about those melons hanging there? She stretched her free arm and poked at Hatsum's bosoms. They make me look sexy and mature, unlike a certain childish girl, I know Hatsum flicked a finger on Yuraraka's forehead. Yuraraka then pulled Midoriya. Let go of him. No, you let go, Hatsum pulled him too. I saw him first. That's childish. You want something mature? I had him first. I, um... I did him better. What? How would you know? I just know, okay. Now, who's being the child? I told you to let him go. No, I told you to let him go. Would you two stop bitching and let go of me? Their hands released him like he was a hot iron bar. Midoriya pinched the bridge of his nose. If only I had the balcony door locked, breath and okay, calm down you two or else, or else no Izuku for a month. Whenever he refused to sleep when he was a kid, his mother threatened him like this, only that his favorite program was at risk, all mighty adventures animated. But Izuku. Yuraraka, if you're going to say something, be sure it won't be an offense. Forget it. Psy, how did you even know I was here? Kiyomomo put a tracker on your phone. Are you serious? It was a safety measure. We need to have a serious talk. You just wait me, Momo. Um, um what now? Midoriya turned to Hatsum, pushing the hem of her shirt to cover her lower regions more, but also exposing more of her cleavage. Stay here for a while. I'll get something to you so you can, you know, clean up. Oh, thanks, I guess. A pink hue appeared on her cheeks. And you behave, all right? Yuraraka nodded thought she had an annoyed face. And with that, Midoriya left the two girls alone in the studio. The tension in the air could rival with one of Kaminari's discharges. You know, I won't accept you. Hatsum turned to Yuraraka, one eyebrow raised in confusion. What are you talking about? In the harem. Even if you somehow manage to get in, I won't accept you. Good thing I'm not aiming for your approval. They faced each other again. You don't get it, right? We don't just share Deku-kun. We are all very close friends. We care about each other as much as we care about him. Hard to believe since you all crazy girls try to control his life. Only because of girls like you. Like me? Yeah, like you. A bunch of bee of selfish girls who only care about themselves and want to use him so they can brag around. Do you really think I want to brag about this? Yoraraka fell in silence. She was still here, so there was a chance that Hatsum really meant it when she said she loved him. The brunette then heard a sigh, and she found Hatsum sitting on the floor with her hands on her face. I really love him, you know. He's very special, and I know why you all love him, to the point of doing something so insane. A harem, you say? Share? Okay, count me in. At this moment, this is the only way to stay near him. Do you, do you think you know why I why we love him? I can guess. He's very kind, caring, and pretty hot too. Even now he's doing something he didn't need to because of me. What's not to love on him? Then, then you should know how important he is to us. If you knew that, why did you try to steal him? I didn't want to steal him. As if I knew he had six girlfriends already. Isn't it supposed to be a secret? Yet, you did steal him. Huh? As much as it pains me to admit, Deku-kun loves you. He made it pretty clear and like you said, he being out there helping you out is a proof of it, so there's nothing I can do about it. But I still won't accept you. Yuraraka crossed her arms and puffed her cheeks into a pout. From her place, Hatsum looked at the other girl, processing what she had said and all that happened. She got up and walked to Yuraraka, who glared at her. But this glare wasn't like the others, filled with rage and killing intent. She was just upset, but in an almost playful way. 
Hatsum then held her hand out, which made Yuraraka raise an eyebrow as she looked at the pink-haired girl from the corner of her eyes. What is this? A truce, rather a white flag. I never meant to steal Midoriya from you, and I don't plan to do it now. But you said you loved him. I do, but I'm not going to force him to include me on his life. Plus, I know that he'll feel sad if we keep fighting. You know him, he'll feel responsible for that. Hmm. So, what do you want? An entire day with him? I warn you that he has the Sundays for himself and the other days are already taken. What? No, no need for that. I don't want to mess the things in your harem. I just want to be near him, share the table at lunch, chat with him, tease sometimes, build support items for him, and be your friend too, if that's okay for you. Yuraraka was clearly taken aback by the last part. You want to be friends with me? If possible, with you all from 1A. You said you care about each other. I want to be part of it too. Why? Why going so far and have so little time with him? Honestly, I've never had many friends. Midoriya is pretty much my only and best friend. I figured out that it's easy to hang around people who have common interests, and I'm sure Midoriya is a huge interest for both of us. Plus, I'm sure this would make him happy. I want him to feel happy. I want to make him feel happy too, if being friends with you will make this happen. No, that's not it. Yuraraka considered something inside her mind, then looked at Hatsum in the eyes. I admit that you really love him. Truth be said, I got a little bit offhand. A little bit? Don't test me. As I said, I got a little bit offhand, and you helped me see that. And I'll tell you that you have guts to get near him since he's my boyfriend. A small smirk formed on her lips. Yeah, but I don't want to get on your bad side ever again. Hatsum scratched the back of her head. Wise decision. Yuraraka then reached for Hatsum's hand. Share him? Share him? They exchanged smiles, finally ending the war between them. But Yuraraka surprised Hatsum by pulling her closer and then locking the pink head in a kiss. Hatsum just stood frozen while Yuraraka kissed her, looking at the brunette with wide eyes. Yuraraka broke the kiss and looked at the still shocked Hatsum with a tinge if red making its way to her face. Just a heads up, we are kinda into that now, so if you're going to hang around us then expect to have some fun while you wait your turn with Deku-kun. Well, um, that's something. You get used to it. At some point you'll like it and it'll be the most common thing in the world. Will I get used? Um, um let's see. Hatsum leaned in closer, held on Yuraraka's waist and gave her a kiss, short and soft, the way she knew how to do it. Yuraraka just gave in while she felt these new lips some more. After they broke apart, Hatsum had a questioning look. Hey, actually you are a good kisser. Well thanks, I just started with this kissing thing. They had warm smiles on their mouths. This could end working just fine. Ahom, I see you're getting along now. Midoriya's voice came from the door, making both of them look at his direction with surprised faces. He just stood there with a slight awkward smile as he watched the duo exchanging kisses, holding on each other's waist and all. M.M. Midoriya, how long have you been there, Deku-kun? I came in on the I want him to feel happy part, but boy, you two surprised me. I should have let you two alone together earlier. Don't say that, Midoriya. She would have killed me some minutes ago. That'd be too dangerous. Yeah, she'd be gone by now. Don't agree so much with me. What? It is true. All right, since we are all good now, Hatsum, I got a towel here. I'll give you some space, okay? Thank you. Wait just a second. Deku-kun, we are okay, but you still have to deal with the girls. Oh, oh, I forgot. Man, this is going to take a while. You wanted to add her, now you have to deal with it. But don't worry too much, they are going to understand when they get to know her better, right Busty? Sure, but let's talk less about the size of my chest, okay? Come on, don't be so serious about it. Yuraraka gave a slap on Hatsum's rear. The pink-haired girl quickly returned the gesture, and Midoriya had to get between them before it turned into a catfight. Turns out he ended gaining a slap from each girl, much to his embarrassment. 
thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through What If Everyone Gets Obsessed With Deku and Had Harim. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout-out to Guy Number 23 for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on FanFiction.net for more amazing works the link is in the description below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to What If Deku 2 for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.